uh, I just want to start the meeting. Didn't bring the gavel, but I uh, just wanted to welcome everyone for being here and taking the time off to uh, to do the council retreat. Uh, it will be live streamed, so just want everybody to know that if you do say anything in here, it'll go out to the internet universe. Uh, it's also going to be recorded, so that way for posterity's sake, uh, it'll do that. They do ask when we talk that we use the microphones so that everybody is being heard, and I hope I'm being heard right now, and I move the microphone closer. So then how do you turn these microphones off? I can no, have it. No, 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 it's green, it's on. Green's on? All right, perfect. And I can actually hear it coming through the system, so we'll move that away, and, and can you still hear me well enough if I move the microphone away? All right, perfect. Um, excellent. So anyway, it's live streamed, it's recorded, uh, please use the microphones. The green means it's on, red is it off. And uh, this is just a, a, a working meeting. It'll be highly interactive. We'll ask questions, see what you want to do as a body, how you want to work together, what we'd like to do. Um, and I've got two questions for you to start off with. And the first one is, and uh, what I like to do here is just start off. You've got notepads there. I've got two questions for you. Uh, why did you run for office? Uh, why, did, why, why do this? Why go through this process? What's your why? Uh, Simon Sinek wrote a great book called Start With Why, and I think why is an important question. So why are we here? As an individual, why did you take the time to put your name on the ballot? Why did you take the time to run? What goals, aspirations do you have for the city? Um, and what contribution would you like to make? And, and really, truly, ultimately, what legacy do you want to leave uh, you know, as elected official? So. That is, that's a lot of questions, but you know, just it's why did you run? But I was actually putting some flavor to it. Is that okay, council member? Oh, that's okay. I need that. Okay. Anybody have questions on that? So just take a moment, quietly by yourself. Uh, introverts think to reach clarity, extroverts talk to reach clarity, and this gives you a chance just to take a moment and write down your responses to that question. Why did you run for office? Are you ready? Anyone want to go first? You good? Jerry, you want to go first? Okay. And I'm actually going to uh, write down just the basic ideas and the flip chart. Okay. Throw them aside. Um, well, you know, it, it's pretty simple. Um, I just had a long-term desire to make a positive difference in our community. Um, you know, um, I, uh, I, um, Served as a merit badge counselor for assistantship in the community merit badge for years and years and years, and and encouraged my boys to um, make a, a positive difference. And and now it's time to step up and and. So I'm here. You say you want to make a contribution. Yeah, that's okay. right. I 
may ask you to do a contribution here. You can uh, help me with the, or would you like to be the, the man to help me with this, Jeremy? Sure. sure. Jeremy's going to do it. So we'll just put him along the room here. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else? Who else wants to go? Oh. Fire away, council member. Growing up in the in the family that I grew up in, giving back to the community service was a top priority, giving back, and also wanting to, to do things differently on the city council, be able to represent the people well and, and cut through a lot of the bureaucratic BS that is often given to, to city hall. Well, and you're going really fast, so uh, what I've heard you say first is you want to make a difference, uh, or contribution. Uh, well, service. Okay service i was raised with the, the attitude of, of service giving back to the community okay. then in big letters cut through the bs and bureaucracy okay, okay. that sums it up perfect excellent Come on jeremy <clears throat> All right, who wants to go next? I'll go. Okay. I just, I just always had a desire to serve the um, citizens of the community. I mean, um, kind of started with my law enforcement background, and then I just heard a lot of stuff from various people about um, how city government works, and um, that's the reason I ran. I just wanted to make a positive change. Okay. So I'm hearing your, your desire for service, your law enforcement background, and a desire for positive change. If I'm hearing you correctly. Yes. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, my friend. And you can just, you know, when you run out of space there, just you can actually put over the pictures or on the okay. wall. Anybody will let you do that. Probably with a law degree, you don't need me to do the direction. I'll, I will figure it out. <laughs> Does not need the direction on that one. Very, very good. Thank you, Council Member Stewart. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, I'll go. <clears throat> it's it's service, but uh, with um, the what I call the nameless and the faceless folks. It's mm -hmm. making sure that the people that aren't politically connected have a representative, a voice. Um, when I moved back here in 2010, I was born and raised in Independence. And um, when we moved back in 2010, we were disappointed in the fact that uh, it seemed like the gap between the has and the have nots had grown and there wasn't a lot of middle ground. Okay. And so I wanted to make sure that people that, that uh, were not talked about or, or weren't politically connected still had a voice uh, and a city that they could uh, feel like cared about them. So it's that bridging that gap. Okay. Yeah. Because you saw the gap of income growing between the have and the have nots. Yeah. You wanted to help. And, uh, and working with those people that are enabled and faceless and saying, hey, how do we help them? Right. Mm -hmm. And then and we were, we put focus back on people that we need to look at and serve, okay. and not those that are already being served. Okay. Anything else? Just I make sure we're good. I think we're good. All right, perfect. Okay. Anybody else? Yep. All right. Um, That's more work. Is this on? No. It's red. Cap that light. Red. There you go. There you go. There we go. Um, I ran. Uh, my parents got asked me to start going to council meetings when Zach Walker intentionally removed retiree health insurance from the budget. Uh, we're not going to talk about individuals today, council members. So That's fine. We're going to retract those statements. I understand. He knows I'm joking. Um, 
but I ran, uh, my parents got me to start going to council meetings and then it was kind of embarrassing that I hadn't been paying much attention. I did some research and decided that I didn't like some of the decisions that had been made. Uh, thought I could make a difference. Was hopeful I could make a difference. And so uh, ran. Uh, ultimately, that that is what some of the other folks have said, which is positive change. Okay. Everything good there? I'm just trying to be an engineer now. Is that it? Yeah. Come on, I had to, I had to zing you once there, Councilmember. No, I zing the city manager. I think it's fair. Fair. More than probably not. You probably owe me several. Probably everyone does. Uh, very good. I guess everybody's gone. Last but not least, uh, so I agree with all of you, uh, and I'll. Put it up here. Uh, positive change. Uh, the way the council works together. Uh, I wanted to be someone that was recognized uh, for the ability to, to listen. And I think leadership is defined by listening to things you don't want to hear. And, and if I don't, if I don't, if I fail on that, call me on that. And, um, and also I've got the three P's that I'll repeat over and over and over again that I would like this body to use as kind of their foundation. And that is productive, polite, and professional to each other. Can we disagree? Yes. Should we disagree? I think it's imperative that we disagree. Um, I've seen some things in my last legislative uh, life where people agreed and it became a big problem. So disagreements are not only, uh, they're really welcome because we've got it, we've got to disagree, but it's okay. We've got to do it in a polite, professional, and productive way. So excellent. Uh, anyway. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anybody, any questions of anybody on that before we move on? Next question is simply this. Uh, everyone has got a list of all the items on here, and you can look at that. We're not gonna do anything with this at this moment. Uh, what I want is a more general question is, what do you want us to do as, what do you want us to accomplish today as a city council? What do you want us to accomplish today as a city council? And what do you, you know, hope that we walk away with? What product do you hope that we walk away with at the end? So with that being said, you can take a moment by yourself and uh, just write down, what do you want to walk away with today?
And I'll just finish up on these right here so the microphone's close enough. Um, who wants to uh, share what they would like to accomplish today? What do they want to walk away with? What's the product you want to finish with? I'll, I'll start. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, agree on or, yeah, agree on some, however many that is, more effective council procedures that make us more productive. Uh, but I'd like those to be agreed upon. That that would be a real goal. Okay. So council uh, policies and procedures are agreed upon. So that we as a body say, how do we want to function? How do we want to work? Also, okay. yeah. And also that, that works within the city manager's uh, workflow and uh, management, something if there are things we can do to make he and his staff's life better, then that helps us too. Okay, be more productive. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, anybody else? Okay, far away. So for me, it's, it's uh, pretty close to that as well. It's an agreed upon way of operating as a body to be efficient and productive in our operations. Okay, very good. So agreed upon way to function and work together. That's what I'm hearing you say. Okay, anybody else? I'll go. Okay. I said a, a well-defined process um, that is not self-serving nor politically charged, um, but a, a design, a true design for service of everyone that lives in this city. Okay. But I, but before we can ever have an agreement, there's got to be better definition. I'm sorry. I said before you're going to reach any agreement. We've got to have better definition of what we're talking about. I, you and I are on the exactly same page. We talked last week. Yes, uh, we, I, I'm not. I'm saying as a whole. Absolutely. We're, we're a new group. Right. So it's not directed at any one person. Right. But communication doesn't always equal understanding. You're so we've preaching to the get, choir. We've got to get to before we can get a design. You've got to have it. You've got to have a defined process. I agree completely. And. And if I can go above and beyond that, council member, uh, defining what a uh, council meeting is, defining what a committee meeting is, defining what a study session is, defining the process that we work, uh, you know, when when someone calls us, how do we respond, how do we react, how do we deal with that issue? And, and uh, an important part of the de definition that I want to hear from you is I've heard you speak a lot about policy. Mm -hmm. I want to hear your definition of policy. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. And now I'm going to clarify that just for a second. Thanks, a great key. My definition of policy might not be the policy definition that we all adopt. So what I want to be clear on is just because. I'm kind of facilitating the meeting and the citizens give me the gavel that doesn't make me the 800 pound gorilla. And so when we define policy, I want to be a, a definition that we all collectively come to, not just, you know, I mean, I've got an idea of it, but I want to make sure that if we work together, that we all agree to that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's characteristics that should be discussed when we reach that point of policy. And part of that, part of what we're talking about is part of those characteristics, but there's many characteristics that define a policy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Uh, anybody else? What you want to leave with today? I really didn't have any expectations on what we might leave with today. Uh, some of the thoughts on there, council procedure, I guess we would have to greatly define that with Councilman Steinmeier. 
what is the procedure? What does that mean collectively as a body? When we're on the the, the dais doing formal business, define find that. Right. I think that's kind of where I'm at. Looking at the the list here, some things have already been defined on, on how we should work and um, do things with our policies and procedures. Don't have a lot to, to add to the list here. I think most of this stuff works itself out already. I mean, yeah. The I will tell you my discomfort with us as a body is that we we really don't know where the parameters are and what the guardrails are. And we, that's why I wanted to bring us together so that we would actually work on that and say, what are our parameters, what are our guardrails, how would we work on it? And But they're not my guardrails, they're ours as a group, collectively. Uh, and I'm a big believer in the concept of consensus. And consensus is not the majority ruling. Consensus is that there's a, a, a powerful discussion and that people who disagree with us are heard and we come to an agreement that is not always a compromise, but consensus is different. It means that the minority has been heard, that their their ideas have been incorporated into it, even though it's not completely a compromise. Consensus may be, you know, a compromise seems like a 50-50 deal or a 60-40 deal. Consensus may be 75-25, but at least some of those things have been included. But I think that's an important concept. So we can talk about that too. Um, has everybody gone? I haven't. Okay. Um, so I guess Hold on, hang on just one second so I can swap this out. And it, Jeremy, if you can give me a favor and put this one right next to that. Um, yeah, we're almost right over his, uh, oh, his city manager's right shoulder would be great. Okay. Forgive me, Council Member Stewart. Okay. <clears throat> so before we can really agree on anything, I think we all need a better understanding of how all the members feel about, about the stuff on this list. Just one example, um, you know, I mean, why do we need, you know, to talk about, you know, the process deadline for Adam items for the agenda when that's something we already, you know, discussed a few months ago and passed a resolution on. So I guess just get, a, I need a better understanding of why they're right. being brought up. Yeah, I mean, I can, if it's okay, I'll give you my perspective on it. It may not be everybody else's perspective, but what I'm hearing you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to clarify what you're saying, and if I'm wrong, stop me and re-clarify my, my concepts. But what I hear you saying is this. You're comfortable with the Thursday deadline before the Monday meeting for a council member or for items being added to the agenda, if I'm hearing you correctly. Not specifically. I'm, I, I'm not, I'm pinpointing that one, but I mean, I could have chosen any of them. Right. And that's why we're here, because we're going to talk about these individually throughout the day. We won't get through all of them, but I want to prioritize them so we talk about the most important items. But, yeah, there's got to be um, what I'm hearing you say is there's got to be a definition for what we're doing and some explanations of why we operate in this way. Yes. OK, perfect. Thank you. All right. Everybody go there. All right. Um, this is what. I would like to see from today as I call it the three P's and that we end up that we always operate in a way that's polite, professional and productive. And I've got some ideas on productive, but we'll we can certainly define those in greater clarity. Um, one of the things I want to do, too, is and I know it's uh, on the list, but I want to really kind of highlight it and I'm going to make it a very, very high priority is how do we set the ethics rules for this body? Um, and I think that's very, very important for us. How do we function as an ethical body in making decisions on behalf of citizens? Because a, that's a very, very important responsibility. Um, and then also somebody has already said defining the role of the study session or defining the role of the, of the council meeting. What is the council meeting? What is that defined to do? How should we function and operate in the council meeting compared to a study session, compared to a committee meeting, compared to uh, a meeting inside the city manager's office? So anyway, those are the things there, and I agree with many of those. Okay. What I want you to do now, you have two copies of this piece of paper. And what I, 
I want you to keep one of them so you don't lose it. Uh, the other one, what we're going to do is you're going to rank these by reverse order of importance. What I mean by that is your most important item will be 10 points. The second item will be worth nine points. So you're, you can look at that list and say, I definitely want to talk about ethics, uh, code of ethics for elected officials. Boom. Then what does that mean? You would put a 10 there. If your next item was city council rules and procedures, you'd put a nine there. Do that in reverse order, okay? Uh, so it's 10, nine, eight. So you know, 10 is the most important. Let me put it up here so it's kind of easy to see. Basically, 10 equals 1, 9 equals 2, 8 equals 3. So from a level of importance, but it makes it easier when she's doing the math, not having to do the math in reverse order. So obviously, those items to get the most important list. We obviously will not get through this entire list today, but I hope that we do, in, in fact, talk about the most important items on that list. So take a moment and rank your items that you would like to see as 10, 9, 8, 7. Becky's then going to take those. She'll do the math and she'll also keep the copies. So that would be for records safety sake is what I'm thinking. I think some of these need some okay. definition prior to really being able to, like okay. when we say city council internal affairs, what can you define that for me? This is what I would define it as. If anybody disagrees with me, please give me your thoughts. Um, and I put internal affairs there. I could have put um, uh, the ethics committee that the city has so that if let's say there was a situation here where there were allegations of someone meeting with a developer on a project and they voted on that project and they met with that developer a number of times you know privately and quietly and exchanged emails and things like that and there were questions of there might be some improprieties there how would we as a body investigate that and what rules would we put in place in that and that might be a situation where we need you know, Jeremy's help with that, and we may need other people's help with that. How do we find that? What are some of the best practices? Does that help? Yep. But I mean, that's really almost like the internal affairs of the police department. Okay. When there's impropriety, how is it investigated? Yeah, I'm with you.
You can track it. I am. Yeah. <laughs> no words. Are you done with I get it. I need to be good for something. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Once we've done that, we're going to give her a minute. So let's take a, a brief break while she tabulates and we'll go from there. So if you need to step away, go right ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, you were supposed to do one, two, three, ten. Oh, just one thing. Yeah. I'll take it. I'm not trying to build my show. No, I have to. Well, that's crazy. Oh, I guess you can just take that one. Yeah. Help us mark them out. All right. I know the other way. Yeah. I think they're all high for all of us. Pen, pen, pen. I think that's what's going on. Did you? I literally never go on and uh, do any <laughs> interactions on social media at all, but that was the oh, Missouri, Missouri Municipal would you, League. What did you get? Uh, my CFC, I think. Oh, are you official? Are you legit now? Well, I'm legit, legit at like the international level. I've been legit at the state level for a while. Are you following LinkedIn? Too legit to I, I, uh, Too legit to quit. I'm, I'm sporadically on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's pretty bad. I've been on it a lot more now than I used to be on it, so I'm trying to be better at that. Do it. Yeah, I had to put it on the side. Did you see the put on yourself? Thank you. This looks pretty good. No legit failures. If not, she'll return it back with, I saw with, with corrections, and you can have another shot. I saw it on Facebook. Smiley face. Smiley face. Oh no. God. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep on the way. 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 What they do. How did I do it? That's what you have to say. Place on this good thing. Exactly. Exactly. That was a pretty good turnout for that yesterday. It was. It was perfectly not to the picture. Now I love it. This is just that's great. It was. It was not too hot. There was some shade. The shade wasn't close to the speaker. That was only the overall. Not bad for year one. Yeah. Uh, year one for last minute. Really good. 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 Did the <laughs> soldier thing go over well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. He read the. The rush. <laughs> Proclamation. Yeah, it was, it was good. good. It was cool. Good. It was actually the other one did the general orders. Three. Yep. Perfect. Yep. General order number three. Perfect. That's right. Yeah, it was actually well, already not. So I stole that. I'll come and get it from you. That's a good idea, though. No, it's Thank okay. You. If you're going to sing to me, I'll. This is different. Thank you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, since June 1st, uh, they read it on the can. Damn. So I was like, let's do that. That's, oh, that's, that's excellent. Yeah, I got that one done. That's really excellent. It's a diuretic. So I hope that becomes a tradition there. Yeah. Me too. Well, unless you do it like Jared, mm -hmm. you're going to have a coffee and cream and over it now, right? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. You can, but you, you can, can, you can yeah. make it more. Right. You can do, you know, yeah. no, you can't force yeah. it at all. 
No, but I think you're right. We can also go. This is I just put it in the invitation. You're now there. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I was thinking about that with Anthony one day. Okay. Talking to him. I thought we were going to his church. Got lost. Showing up. Did you hear what he just Show up at some other places. Uh, okay. yes. It says here. People are interested in this. So airplane. It must show no, different. Got more airplane yesterday. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get in there, dude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's cool. Cool. We need to go. I mean, it, it's, it's hard. Well, here I'll say it's there. Um, so, French mile. So, I'm going to have to go back. That just shows it's mad. I did too. So, I think. I also just know what I can see. So you can see about here's the bill, though it's the thing. You can change it. So it shows it all the time. It'll just show true. So I must ask for the last time. That's my guess. That's really what it's very similar. It's not what I can see. I always think back to what they're doing. No, I did not. Back in I mean, it's a public yeah. record regardless. Right, right. But, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you can share it for this, yeah. the purposes of this, I mean, just uh, the totals. Right. Because right. I just, I just don't have any time. It's not real anyway. Yeah. But I can um, have Christy say Christy and make a print of copy of it. Yeah, but the first thing is, what are the top three? The top three are code of ethics. Hold on one second. So, that's quite the deal. Really quite the deal. Code of ethics, rules of procedure, and process deadlines for adding items. I go one is just I All right, so let's go ahead and, and uh, reconvene if we may. So here were the top three items uh, that were included. Mr. Mayor, before you announce those, yes, sir. may I say something? I just learned this. Uh, today is Mr. Walker's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mr. Walker. Happy birthday to you. Very good. Congratulations. Uh, now, do we need to get a code of ethics for is it appropriate for us to see happy birthday or not? So, anyway. Not the way we say it. <laughs> Well said, my friend. Well said. All right. Uh, so the first three items were code of ethics. Um, the second one is a code of procedures or how we're going to do things as a group. That could be a whole bunch of subsets from it. And then a deadline for a council agenda. So from that being said, uh, just take a moment. What would you like us to do? How would you like us to proceed uh, in that? We're not going to get all the code of ethics today, but 
maybe just highlight it and frame it as I see it as let's talk about a process that we like to do to get that process started. Next to that one? Not, I don't know. You are a mind reader. Yeah. All right. Anybody, any thoughts on how we proceed as a group with regards to code of ethics for um, the city council as a, as a body? Can we get the current definition of it? That'd be, that's a great question, and I don't have it in front of me. Code of ethics for elected officials. Do we have a code of ethics that's codified? There's, Thank you, Dina. Um, charter in there, there's something in the charter. It's in the charter. So what's the definition of it as it relates to us? Right. Let's take a look. Good thing I brought my charter book. Maybe we need charter book. Code of Conduct, page 30, section 5.1. And how long is it? Would it be worthwhile for you to, you might have to turn your microphone on to Jeremy. Oh. Thank you, sir. So there is a Code of Ethics or Code of Conduct in the Charter. It's, it starts on page 30, section 5.1. How long is it? Would it be worthwhile to read it? And Several pages. Yeah, so the section is relatively long, but the first part of the section pretty much gets to the point. It says council members, board members, and employees shall accept the fundamental principle that the sole function of local government is the efficient provision of facilities and services deemed essential 
for the kind of urban living desired by the resident population. Council members, board members, and employees are agents of public purpose and shall hold office or employment for the benefit of the public. Council members, board members, and employees recognizing that the public interest is their primary concern shall faithfully discharge their official duties regardless of personal considerations. And then the question is defined above and beyond that too. Go ahead, council member. I, I was just saying there, there's, there's a lot in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think if we just use the bullet points, section five one, five two, five three, it points that we can we can look historically. I'm sorry. If we look at um, section five one, five one, five two, five three, um, we can we can look at what how it describes it without getting into all of it because I think we've all read it enough. Um, but then we need to look at historically, you know, what's been the strengths of that and what's been the weaknesses. Right. That's a good starting point. So John's been on council a long time. He's seen things that a lot of us have not. So he'll be a good resource as a historian. I think he can help us with some of that. Um, but that, that'd be my suggestion, like historic strengths and weaknesses of it. Okay. Anyone else other thoughts on it? This is what I, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there and propose it to groups and see if, if you like it or not. Um, I think there's a number of things that need to be changed with regards to um, ethics reform for the city as well as a code of ethics for elected officials. And what I mean by that is um, I just had a long discussion yesterday with a colleague of mine from Jefferson City and you know, talking about ex parte communications with someone uh, outside the realm. So I'm looking at, I would like us to actually kind of officially give some credence to a committee of three to five people. Some of us could be members right here to work on it. It could be citizens, you know, whatever. But I would like us to have some kind of a group to bring to us, here's what I think you should have for a code of ethics. This is what I think you should have for campaign finance laws. This is how, um, you know, one of the things that really bothers me is that campaign finance laws cannot be really for all intents and purposes with even the Missouri uh, Ethics Commission, you can't investigate it. Okay. They have no investigative authority. So, but we could do that. There's nothing in the statute that says we couldn't do that. So that if something happens in a, in a campaign, we as a body could say this could be investigated by, you know, another police department or a private investigator that we assigned to that task to say, you know, what happened. But I think there's a whole host of things that we could do to tighten that. And that's what I would like us to do is to say, we agree on doing that and go forward in that. And I don't want to be too cumbersome, but I'm looking at, you know, basically in my mind, you know, getting together a committee, three to five people meeting once a week to say, okay, what, here's our, here's our things. What are some issues that happened in the past? What should we do and how should we go forward with it? We have an ethics commission, right? Should we, should we ask them for to take that on, or? Yeah, I, I see their role as as defining the charter as being different. I what I'm exactly. looking for here is really someone to look at everything, not just from their their perspective. They're, they're of the process. more reactive. You're asking for something more proactive, right? Yeah. And how do we put that process together? And that's really all I'm looking for here today is, you know, could we, you know, could we agree as a group, uh, you know, put together a framework for a committee, three to five people, make it pretty easy to select them, but make us all together, you know, aware of it. And then they bring back to us their recommendations for that. And then I would see us having a study session on that. And then if we have agreement, then taking those and putting them into a, a council meeting and talking about it. But I'm open. I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to be seen as just jamming ideas down people. Go ahead. John, did you go ahead. Well, I I wrote down um, just four points. If we're going to have these uh, uh, a discussion on it, um, of course the history the historic 
aspect of it, what, what the strength shortfall has been. What are the assumptions that we're addressing? And in specifically, like you said, campaign finance, so there's an assumption aspect, there's a law aspect. Um, we got to have clear accountability and enforcement if we're going to make a committee and, and make new policy. And, uh, and then how does that serve the public? And how does it, does it add to a budget to do so? Does it add to, to the, the stakeholders of our city, the workload of city staff? How does that, so we have to have all those characteristics of this policy if we're gonna try to come up with something like that. I think those are important aspects. Yeah, and I would agree with you, Council Member, I'd agree with you completely. I think that's a great framework to, uh, to go forward with. You know, what historically has happened in the city of Independence that have given people heartburn, if I'm hearing you correctly. And then from that, what assumptions, what happened, how did it work, and then how, are, what policy can we put in a place that's going to be effective, but also uh, not have unintended consequences? Yes, and, and a focus on law and enforcement. Mm -hmm. That's, and that, and again, that, you know, does that add to budget? Does it add to, you know, what does that cost us to, to have that type of enforcement? So those are and there's more but those are a good starting point right no i i think that's that's excellent and if i could add to that mayor i'm kind of like with um councilman steinmeier what type of time frame what are we looking at for this uh, what's already currently in our state statutes that governs us as elected officials both in the MECs, the Missouri Ethics Commission, which oversees um, our ethics, uh, one, our, our ethics filings that we all have to do as elected officials, right. our um, uh, committee reports, what does that look like? And then um, I think thirdly, probably one of the more importantly, since we're talking about election finance and, and election cycles, using the last election cycle as a prime example that our previous mayor raised the most money and spent the most and she is not our mayor right or wrong not mm -hmm. making a judgment call on that and to the uh, city council person at large raised the most spent the most and not here as well so the system works right i would say so i i would wait hate to waste a lot of time on doing things where safeguards are already in place no that's a great point um, and, and is that something that happens all the time or is that a one-off? That's another thing too. I mean, that's, I think you, if you do the best you can to res represent the, the best you can, the people see that. And if yeah. you do not, the people see that as well. I would like us to, there's two things I would like to see us do that are, I think are important is I think the the campaign finance part of it should be in place. And what I mean by that is we, we have no campaign finance limits at all. So somebody could take a $10,000, $50,000, $100,000 check from someone. When you're getting limits of that high, I mean, when, when, when people give you a $10,000 check, in my opinion, they want more than access. You know, they're going to they're gonna want to look for a return on investment. And so I would like to see us put in campaign limits. Uh, I would like to see us start, you know, right now, we don't have to report meals or trips or anything like that that someone gives us or, or allows us to do. And I'm not making, you know, pointing any fingers, things like that, but I think there should be restrictions on that. Uh, if you're going to meet with a developer, if you're going to meet with a vendor of the city that's doing current business, that should be reported. So those are the kinds of things that I think is the transparency that I would like to see in this process so that we all do this. Other city councils uh, do this. If you've met with a, if you've met with a vendor, or if you met with a developer, and you're voting on that project, you're required to, you know, make that publicly known that I met with developer A, B, or C before you vote on the project. Those are some of the kinds of changes I, that I'm looking for in addition to the campaign finance. Um, I, I, I think we should also in the campaign finance put limits of a thousand dollars. I think we, we've got to work on this. This is a tough one. Vendors who do business with the city 
cannot contribute to elected officials who are running the city. Okay, I just think that's a tr huge conflict of interest, um, and those would be some of the, those are things in addition to. You're absolutely right. There's a great point there with regards to that, but those are some of the changes I'd like to see made, and we could we could come to an agreement on that. But those are some of the additional things that I see, and I see you moving for the microphone, Council Member. So go ahead. oh, I agree with all of those, um, and to take one of them one step further, I think yes. We should disclose, disclose if a developer or someone interested in doing business in independence reaches out to us. Right. But I, I think we should have a, a stricter rule that we, in general, we can't meet mm -hmm. with that person. If we do meet, we can't vote on their project. Mm -hmm. Now. If it's as part of a meeting with staff or there's some concession made for, you know. Right. In the 4th District, there's a, a group that's been trying to get some state funding to do some um, senior housing. Uh, and they've tried for two years. So I've talked to those folks several times. But it would be a really nice addition to my district. Um, like those type of things. Ultimately, the council member probably should be able to be a part of it. People will call them what's going on. Right. But I think it always should be, I would like to see economic development moved out of council chambers and moved into city hall, so to speak, and the EDC. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the sort of quasi-private folks along with development staff so that there's no even appearance of right. impropriety. Right. And I, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think the other thing is too, um, lunches, dinners, you know, right now people can buy us those things when to report them. Now, when I meet with anybody, I tell them no one buys my lunch, period. It doesn't happen. Um, even had lunch with Zach the other day with another uh, person and I said, you know, I'm paying for my own lunch. So I just think it's so important for us to be in this role that there be transparency. And I like to see those things reported. If, some, if you do meet with, with someone for lunch on that, just a quick email to Zach and let's talk about that. What do we think and what's too, hard, what's, what's too, ex, what's too extensive, what's uh, prohibitive? You know, there's got to be that fine balance. And so I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions and, and ideas on that. Go ahead, Council Member. I'm going to I'm going to throw a little bit of a curve here, and that's okay. Uh, looking at the agenda tonight, I I, I would in the areas of, tra of transparency, I would um, think that we would have to include lobbyists. I agree. Special interest groups such as communication meetings with people like in the energy. If something passes tonight that uh, is a part of of our city and, and business community, mm -hmm. um, I think that could be an issue. So right. we have to think long and hard about all this as mm -hmm. well. Um, I think the definition of lobbyist is easy because they're you know they're registered lobbyists in the state of Missouri, and that's an easy one to do. And well, and yeah, but but we're talking about um, well, I mean, we'll throw it out there. What about you know, if the chamber creates a pack, then mm -hmm. they become politi a political arm of the chamber and that's going to be a problem too. So we're going to have to have lots of disclosure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I think it's a fair discussion. discussion. Absolutely right. I'm not saying I'm not trying to influence anything, but right. that's a huge concern of mine. Sure. So no, I think that's a fair question and that's why we're here today to talk about that. Okay. And so what I was thinking is, so we don't spend a whole lot of time on this, because this is a pretty good discussion. It's recorded. It allows that committee to go back and listen to this discussion and say, what is the direction from the council to do that? So they can go back and listen to the comments and conversations we had and say, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to prioritize there? And what are we going to work on? Um, now, will we be able to do a complete and extensive list? I don't think so. Could we prioritize some things to make things more uh, open and fair to, to citizens, absolutely. And uh, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see done. 
and I, and I can hear from your concerns too, council member, that you want to see some changes done on that too. A lot of transparency. Right. I agree with you completely. We're, we're on the same page, same handle there. Okay. Anybody else other thoughts? Yeah, just one. And that is that, you know, you said that other communities have these kinds of codes of ethics in place. Right. And, you know, it's pretty reasonable that we could request copies of those and start that'd be a good starting point to for a committee like that to look at you know four or five six of those and just say you know here, here's some places that we need to discuss and, and right. put some things in place so. no i agree one of the things i was going to ask uh, all of you if it was okay to do and obviously with city manager walker here is to uh, reach out to the uh, the colleges and say, hey, could we get an intern who would start doing some of the research for this? And they would do some of the basics to help the committee. I would also like to see, with City Manager Walker's approval, uh, to get a staff member to work with that committee to help them with that process. Because we're, we're tasking them with a pretty, pretty broad uh, perspective and a pretty broad viewpoint of what to do. But I think we all agree here collectively that there needs to be some changes and adjustments so that it's more clear and fair. If I could throw two cents in, if we're going to be comparable to different municipalities, then we need to be apples to apple comparison. Cities our size, like uh, cities Columbia. our size that deals with budgets comparable to our size, the utilities that we deal with, um, also municipal services or municipals that are equal to our size do they have legislative aids for their council people we all typically all of us here have jobs so we are doing the best we can with, right. with the resources and time that we have so the comparison has got to be straight across the board on 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 this and as you well know there the intent is to get cities who comparison in the state of missouri they're close which obviously springfield and columbia come to mind but i think it'd be fair too to look at counties uh, that are pretty large and have budgets comparable size. So we might get, you know, look at Jackson County's process. Uh, we might look at, you know, cities in St. Louis that are comparable, but they may not have the utility too, or the utilities that we offer. Um, and, but, but at least have those in comparison. So, you know, this is what they've got. Okay. Perfect. And, yes, council member. And then it, again, going back to, um, if, if we're going to involve, uh, Mr. Walker and the staff, we need to know what the cost will be for that as well. Okay. Especially in a time of budgeting, you know, when he's trying to, he's cutting in some areas and we're trying to figure out our revenue. Right. Um, all of these items could cost some money or for a department more money. Okay. And does it take away from other aspects of service to the community? Is, it, is, it, is there a measurable um, outcome here? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm just kind of asking the group here to wrap up the conversation before we do lunch, but, um, you know, would it be okay if, uh, if I draft kind of a resolution you know, put it out there. I want to make sure that we don't violate, you know, sunshine, but is there a way to share via a document and then adjust it or, or change it? I think that violates sunshine if we do it with email, but if we had a, a common document that we worked on, like a Google Doc or something like that. A Google Doc would not be a good idea. No, you don't want to do a Google no. Doc. Okay. I mean, if you guys had a document that you wanted to be almost like a working document and wanted, you wanted to create it and then they could send me the edits. We could go through that route just to make sure that everything is good to go on the sunshine side of it. I would think that if we start making it towards a working document, each of you guys are constantly working on it. We can get into some hairy places with the sunshine law. So it's probably best to have it in my office and then you guys can each just send your feedback that you want to update it with. Okay. So, with uh, your blessing, if I could work with the city manager, we could get a framework, create somewhat of a, like a resolution, say this is what we want to do, uh, and then here's the framework for it. You know, I'm willing to do that. I'd like it to be more 
you know, almost ad hoc and, and very casual. We pick some people and say, hey, work on it and go from there. But I also want to be respectful to you. I don't consider myself the mayor. I consider myself a member of a body. So I want to be respectful to all of you. You know, the one thing we haven't talked about is makeup of the committee and how you know, how many people. Right. And how we would identify who those people might be. Um, I mean, I think a smaller number is better on this particular one. Right. Um, but um, I don't have a suggestion as to how we identify who those people might be. Could we not approach the uh, Board of Ethics to see if they would be willing to take this up? Would that be under their purview to, to do an extra task, if you will? Yeah, they don't I mean, meet we could certainly, regularly. You know, we could certainly ask the city manager to reach out to them and say, hey, would you be willing to take on this task and add, you know, two or three people? Uh, you know, if any of you would like to work on it, you know, I'm extending the invitation. I would like to have the opportunity to work with that committee to do that because this is an area that I'm really concerned about. So, have we agreed to a committee? We haven't. We're okay. really just we're just discussing it. I mean, you know, is this something we want to do? Councilor, give me your thoughts. Well, I like the idea. I don't know that it it should be in resolution form of, at this point, but I think that um, if we have. Um, if we can agree upon the characteristics of the policy that we're wanting to bring some input to, then we can send input into Becky for review, and then it go as part of the study session. Okay. But that, you know, those study sessions are, you know, they're kind of up to you. But if we want to talk about mm -hmm. waterline replacements rather than ethics right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not being mean but i would no, like, no, no. You, I'd, you're I'd making like a great to, point i would like to to talk about some things that are um kind of relevant to what we do so right no that's a great point mr mayor yes sir um i'm i, I just had a few thoughts here okay. one is about 45 days ago or so the council did pass a resolution that directed staff to research four items under the umbrella ethics. One of those was what other cities do for a code of ethics, campaign contribution limits, uh, dealing with conflicts of interest, and term limits. Um, I have not, you know, completed any of that review so those could that resolution could conceivably be modified to assign that work to a citizens commission to mm -hmm. to work on. Um, I've not been able to consult with the the city councilor on this either, but I'm not sure which of these items would be best suited for the code of ordinances and which ones may be more apropos for charter inclusion. Right. Um, and if the council does elect to form a charter review committee, some of these items may be lend themselves well to that group. So just as the the body contemplates this today, there are a few uh, moving pieces that may contribute to this and help you um, get to the outcome that you're looking to. Okay. But I'd be, you know, uh, with the with the agreement of the group, uh, I'm good with the ethics commission that's that we have in place right now and adding two or three people and having them work together if that group is willing to do it. And they just kind of add to it and in and, and an ad hoc group that would be working, you know, 90 days to get some stuff done. And we're going to talk about you know, if they're going to do it 90 days, it's they've got to be willing to meet quite a bit. Can I just ask one question? Sure. In terms of, um, again, the historical um, component of, of the ethics commission, can for people that are listening, can we explain what they're tasked to do, what they're, um, and, and when's the last time that they actually met? Can we do that? <laughs> so section 5.7 of the charter uh, talks about the Board of Ethics, their procedures, powers, and duties. Um, it's in and of itself is several pages. I'm trying to figure out if there's. 
and Jeremy, if I may, if if, it, if it's a lot that you need to kind of digest, we could always come back to it. And and then, Councilmember Perkins, you said you thought it was how long? I was thinking maybe three years ago. Three years. I know it's been a long time. Go ahead, Becky. I think it was. Sorry, October of eighteen. Right. Looks like maybe the last time that they met somewhere around there. So I think it's been a long time because I think that they've met. So who knows that they've still have an interest in it? They're still on the committee, but right. you know. So I think that's one of the things we have to do is reach out to them and say, I'm what's, what's their no, interest? I'm just wanting some clarity on. So people know Absolutely. No, that's a great question. I agree. Okay. Uh, so let's give, let's give, uh, so we can use that resolution to start from, uh, give the city manager some direction with regards to reaching out to that committee, see if they have an interest in it, see if there's an interest in any of these bodies, you know, from any of us here. And, you know, I'd like to move pretty quickly on this. We get the process moving and give them like a, a 60 or 90 day window of producing some of these, some of these documents to say, this is what we can consider. So can, so can, can that come to us in a study session? Mm -hmm. You'd be okay with that? Absolutely. I, I think that's a great place for it. So I agree completely with you on that. Okay. Thank you. And we may put it, you know, in the next study session, just have a discussion about it. What, what do we think? How are we willing to work? If they're prepared, or if we need to do it the next one, that's fine. Right. And if not, then postpone it. Yeah, because we've got a holiday approaching us. Yeah. So I'd rather I'd rather have the information um, in a timely fashion that's mm -hmm. more informative than just rush to us. So sure. Okay. Thank no, you. good point. Councilmember Perkins, you look like you wanted to say something, but I'm reading just facial expressions. No, I'll read it. I, I'm working a dialogue in here. This, sorry. So I'm working a dialogue in here with everybody. This is okay. one of my one day off, so I'm trying to do all the city stuff and this at the same time. So, so I guess I'm wondering if we if we um, already passed a resolution asking uh, C Manager to obtain this information. Should we review that information prior to finalizing this or? Oh, absolutely. You know, should we? I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about finalizing decisions. I'm talking about finalizing whether we have a committee, you know, do that or, or I'm just, you know, um, I'm not opposed to having a committee address this. I just, you know, I mean, we've already taken some action, so um, I don't want to do something that would counteract that mm -hmm. or even if I'm, just you know, I'm not opposed to i just want to be respectful of everybody here and the process that we agree upon i do i would like to get some outside help either some interns to do some research uh, citizens to do some research we've got a variety of citizens that have skills in you know public administration that can be helpful in that regard um, so just reach out to those folks but i want all of us to agree that you know, we feel comfortable with them working on it I'm fine with that. I just, like I say, I'm, I'm fine with that. I just don't want to necessarily have two processes in place since we already passed the right. resolution. So, you know, um, if it can be part of that or if it, uh, I, I'm fine either way. I just mm -hmm. think we need to decide what we want to do. We, we may find, though, that with the information that he brings that we have different questions or we want to go back and change them. I'd prefer to get it right if we're going to make these kind of changes. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Okay. One thing that I we can go ahead and do, I've, I've been informed previously that I'm technically the, the staff liaison for the, uh, for the Board of Ethics. And what we can do, given how long it's been since they've met, is just make contact with those people, confirm that they're still around and interested in serving, and, uh, and that way, when you all do get to a point where you want to utilize them in some way, uh, we, we know that we've got a, a board that's ready to go or if you need to fill some appointments or something like that. So we can go ahead and just make sure that's, that's lined up with them so they're ready to go when you're ready to use them. Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, when that might, 
I don't know if I'd be out of line saying, hey, can you go ahead and do that? But I don't want to, you know, I think this is this is okay for us to do that. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> well, yeah, he can check with the board ethics. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I can do that. So I'll, yeah. I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get that figured out. That sounds great. Perfect. All right. And we're, uh, so what I'm seeing is kind of the results of this is working off the uh, resolution we have, bringing that information, getting that information together so we have a study session to move forward. That's what I'm hearing from the group if I if uh, we're all in agreement. Everybody good? Any How questions, are the, comments? Uh, How are the board uh, positions filled on the Board of Ethics? Is it through an individual appointment or um, do they? I don't think so. It's... I'm just curious in case some of them aren't interested. How is it? Their possessions will be filled. Right. No, it's section 5.6 says there shall be a board of ethics which shall consist of five members appointed by the council for four year terms which shall overlap based on the expiration dates of the terms of original appointment. So it's a a five-member board appointed by the council as a whole. Have, since it was overlapping and it's been four years since they've met, have we have we filled those? Or they? I mean, did they reapply? Did they say, I'm, you know, I'm interested in another term? Where are we at with that process? And if we need to do this after lunch, I mean, that's fine. I don't want to hold anybody up, but these are questions that would be nice to have answered. So. No, great point. I'm guessing okay. we probably need some research on that because there has to have been some well, it's over vacancies. Two years, so right. we're in four years, so all of them yeah. could be off for all we know. Right. The upcoming vacancies are July of this year. But but it's been four years since they've met. Um, October of 18. Yeah. So two years, and we're almost in a four-year window. So when, when was the last two-year cycle? Like the last appointment cycle? Yeah. Uh, let's see. What are the terms on these? Four years. Are they four-year terms? That's what Jeremy just read. Yeah. So, I mean, it would have been probably about four years ago for these these people who are expiring this year. Yeah, but there was a two years. Every two years, they're... They are, they, are they rotating? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the next, the next term expirations aren't until next year. And I think we recently did some appointments. I mean, I'd have to do some further research to be able to give you like a definitive answer, but some of the names seem a little bit familiar. So I think recently we've appointed people, regardless of if they've been meeting, their terms are still expiring at just, the same rate. Just confirm what and who and you're right for how long. And I yeah. think we're... We can look into it. So if, uh, to recap, would I impose upon you, Mr. City Manager, to recap what you've heard and then make sure we're all on the same, on the same page? Yeah, my understanding of what I've heard is that the council would like us to complete the research um, of those uh, four focus areas that were identified and the uh, resolution regarding ethics that directed the city manager to... Right. Uh, complete that research and then bring that uh, those findings to the city council uh, in a study session forum for presentation uh, so that the council can hear those and then discuss um, how to move forward uh, from that point. Okay. Does that seem reasonable? Okay. So, excellent. That brings us to uh, also another very important fact, uh, item on the agenda, which we did not vote on. I should have had lunch in there as an item we would vote on. I didn't. My mistake. But we are at lunch. Uh, we do have uh, uh, sack lunches back here. Everyone in the room today is welcome to have lunch with us. We have enough for everyone. So, with that being said, let's adjourn until, say, uh, 10 till 1. Does that sound good? It'll give us about 40 minutes or so, but the lunches are there. Be ready to go. And if we're ready to go before that, we can start. Does that sound good? All right. Do lunch. Uh, shall we get started then? Get it fired up, get it ready to go. All right. So the next topic on the item of city council rules and procedures, which is incredibly broad, but it was kind of meant to be that way to have the discussion on it.
So uh, just take a, a moment by yourself, any procedures or processes that you would like to uh, change, address, provide guardrails, anything like that. And I was not live there, so I was not talking. So the next item on the agenda that we're going to talk about is city council rules and procedures and anything that you would like to change or adjust or do that. So take a moment, apply by yourself. And uh, what items would you like to change, adjust, do differently? All right, anybody, any thoughts on rules and procedures that we should adjust, change, adopt? Um, I'll throw one out, and I think it might be on the list somewhere else, but I think the, as council members, we really don't have much oversight mm -hmm. uh, uh, about how we um, communicate or handle, handle ourselves working with city staff and other folks. I think that council members should be uh, subject to the human resource resources policies of the city, just like if we were city employees. Just a question on that. Um, the city charter is pretty clear what our role and, and uh, with city staff and whatnot, we're, you know, we're to work through city manager and request it. Um, so I'm not sure what human resource policy we, do you have anything specific in your talk? Just um, staff over the last few years um, has expressed some concern with abuse or um, poor treatment, um, you know, I just think we should, we should just like in our regular jobs, 
you know, be subject to sexual discrimination, abuse, harassment, hostile work environment. I just think it puts us at a higher level. So, so my question would be then, so if we're going to be treated like a city employee, um, does that require us to have to attend classes, training classes, all of that? And yeah. I mean, we're we're twenty hour part time guys now. Sure, people, men and women. Sorry, and and um, so I, I mean, I understand what you're you're saying. I, I think the easiest way to, in my mind, is just follow the charter guidance. Is work through the city manager with department heads and staffing and, and either he gets us uh, the information that's requested or as I've done I've requested to meet with department heads or city staff with him and he sets it up and then we don't have that issue because that's sure that's what the charter says we we work through him these are all his people and I think I would agree I think we've had council people that have been way too involved in departments and city staff the ma the main thing for me is the behavior on this one. Um, I'm good 100% with everything going through the city manager. Uh, I think that's a lot easier to manage and keep track of. But I'm talking about just as humans, we're subject to human resources. Not that we're like city employees, but that we sign off on the handbook and everything. I understand what you're saying. I, I'm just saying it, it, the safeguard for us is to work right there. That's our guy. And if we're just making our communications through him or through our administrator, I have very little interaction with department heads. I'll, I'll go to him. And so I, that's one of our big safeguards is if we're always going through him, I don't know where our behavior issues can be. I, and I'm not challenging it. I'm just saying I just, I just don't want to become a city employee that way. I mean, we're elected officials, so that it's a different different aspect i understand and i and i will I, I will comply with it but but he's my he's my safeguard if i just go through him then i i don't have the, a, a lot of contact with city staff right um i have a question go ahead. so where would the um let's say it was violated where would the discipline come in i mean we can't be disciplined like a city employee so i mean Right, and that's where, and that's where the ethics commission at that point would would you know kick in, because I don't know if the rules are, and we have Jeremy look this up, but what are the rules for if that happens? And I'm going to go back and fall back on my state experience. You know, every year we had to do sexual harassment training. We had to talk about what is a hostile work environment, uh, what does that constitute, how does somebody make a, a complaint against elected official? Because elected official is a different, you know, they're a different animal in our world. You, you can't just remove them easily from, they just can't be fired. There's a whole process once elected official has been put into place. But in that regard, I think we should all be held to a higher standard. And, and I, I am in agreement with this. Uh, we should have sexual harassment training. We should have hostile work environment training. And I realize this is a part-time job, but those are very, very important criteria for us uh, to do that. Uh, you know, has it been a problem way in the past? You know, I think it has. And my goal here is to make sure that we have a polite, a productive, and professional work environment for all of us. I think there needs to be some guardrails put into place because I, I'll be honest with you, I don't have any concerns with anybody serving right now. But if someone were elected in the future and those guardrails aren't there, how do we deal with that in that process? You know, that's my concern. So. <clears throat> And, and I would say that the guardrail is, the, is, a, is defined by the charter and that our, our responsibility is to communicate to and through him. Mm -hmm. And so... But not everyone does that. It, it, well, then that's a problem. And, and that's really the question of, okay, when they don't do that, how do we address it? What do we do? And how do we, how do we you know, because I don't mind being the the bad guy in that scenario and going to council members and saying, hey, you've got to work through the city manager. Um, I think there should be a policy on behalf 
and, I, and you may already have it in place with your with your directors, but if we talk to a director directly, they need to shoot them an email and say, we had this conversation uh, that you know this council member uh, did this. I'll give you a worst case scenario that I've, not worst case scenario, but an example of, of behavior above and beyond what they should do, and uh, this council member was removed for it. Council member from a city in the state of Missouri um, had a rental business, a rental property. Uh, somebody moved out, left a bunch of trash there. They moved the trash in the front lawn, <coughs> called the public works department. Can you go by and uh, pick that up? Public works department goes by and picks it up, you know, throws away the trash. Uh, other council members find out about it, and there's proceedings to remove that council member, and they, they were, in fact, removed. So I realize that's not specifically around this issue. We've got to have some guardrails that say, you know, this is outside the bounds of, of behavior. And that's why I want code of ethics, those kinds of things to address those issues, kind of kind of codify it, make it specific, you know. So I, I really, I, I'm, I'm very, very strong on this. I think we should have sexual harassment training. I think we should have hostile work environment training. And, uh, and it made it very clear on how we communicate with, with the city manager and on what, what context and what pretext when and how and how quickly he should respond and all those kinds of things. You look like you had a question, council member. Mr. City Manager, we did have sexual uh, harassment training 17, 18, I'm guessing. In the, so does that, I'm trying to remember, and that put us under that policy and procedure for sexual harassment, correct, at that time, or was that just a one-off? It, it didn't subject the council to the city's policies and procedures manual. So for the benefit of those who may watch this later, the, the city has an adopted policies and procedures manual. Those items go to the personnel board. They receive a recommendation and they come to city council. When you're hired into service by the city, there's different policies you acknowledge, in, including that one, so that if you find yourself having run afoul of one of those, it's, you know, you can't plead ignorance. You've signed off that you're at least familiar with these. We engage the organization in citywide sexual harassment training. And as part of that, decided to extend that to the city council. Because of the nature of your positions, even, even though they're part-time, you still, you know, come to the city hall or you still engage with employees and if you know, certain remarks could be taken um, in a way that may run into some of those sexual harassment issues and subject the city to litigation. So that's the purpose of bringing the council into that training. Um, that one is a good example in that we really don't have a compulsory mechanism for that and not everybody participated in that, um, but that still that liability still exists, um, whether they participated or not. We just hope to minimize it by having participation in it. Thank you for the right question. So to the, to the other point, I would say I probably speak to our directors the most. Because <clears throat> my district, I would argue, is probably one of the busiest with a tremendous amount of losing moving parts and stuff to that. And with that, in that spirit, I do re conversate with uh, our city manager about it. I work through a, a tremendous amount through uh, Adam through that. But there are those times where I'll maybe work on Inglewood is, is one of the major examples right here at the forefront where I would just text Lisa, hey, are we still on point for the barricades? Or, or if I get a quick or re request from a constituent about A, B, or C, I could shoot a quick tax. Otherwise, you're you're going to slow down the workflow to a city manager to find out to this person back to me to get to that other person. So, within the spirit of the charter, I am completely uh, working within that because the charter says specifically, if I recall correctly, directing. Um, yeah. I, there's no directing here. There's already a, a forethought plan of, of what's taking place and maybe some follow through. And or I just may bounce down into, uh, I use, I'll use i use Tom's canal quite a bit. And I'll text him, see if he's there, and bounce down to his office and say, hey, do you have time? What's this or that? And 
we have that kind of open conversation, which streams line, at least for me, streams line the process tremendously. But the big overarching things, most certainly I worked with the city manager's office, Adam's office, Mark Randall, to a, a lesser degree when he was here, but trying to keep that flow. But most certainly, I, I think I can say that everybody that I work with, I treat with the utmost respect and, and dignity and, and being polite and thanks. I um, I agree, and this is not a personal thing at all for anybody. Uh, in the past, we've had council members that have even publicly uh, and on the dais tried to fire individuals by name, and that's a really chilling effect on just your run-of-the-mill city employees. Even if your name doesn't pop up on a list, you're think, still thinking, man, what happens if I see that guy at a carnival or doing, you know, cleaning up the street? I, I think it also, on top of the liability issue, then it brings in that secondary part, which is it makes the employees feel like they're free to do their job the best they can. And if they are in an uncomfortable or uh potentially a legal situation with a council member that they feel like they can make a report and go through the regular process. In other words, there's still some protection for our employees, our employees, Mr. Walker's employees, the city's employees. That really does matter to me. I, I want people to, uh, and if I do it, then I need to be reported. Like I want people to feel comfortable and safe as they can in their, in their workplace. I don't want people to feel threatened or scared. So anyway, that's that's all I had. To add to that, I, I agree with you 100%. Those guardrails need, need to be in place and have our employees, have the employees, have the, the freedom and, and the ability to put those concerns out there. But I don't want to tie any of our the council hands who who builds the, the working relationship with, with our people the way we have. Oh, yeah. That's sure. But I'm with you on the, on the yeah, yeah. rails. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So what I'm hearing the group say with regards to the definition that you had with regards to directing versus communicating, mm -hmm. would it be okay with this council if, uh, you know, it, they do not have to report communication, but if there is a sense of direction from a council member to a staff member, that they report that to Zach. I mean, there needs to be some kind of process on that. What do you mean by direction? Uh, you know, just telling me, just like the example I used earlier, hey, I've got some trash in my front yard, can you go pick it up? You know, that's not their responsibility, nor should we be using staff for, for anything like that, or directing them to, uh, hey, I want you to do this report or run this for me, or can you get these numbers for me? That's a little different than there was a game plan in place See what I'm saying? Do, do you have what's, a position on this, Mr. Sorry. Walker? From no. say what? I was going to ask Mr. Walker if he has a position from staff's side or director side on this. Because of some real life examples that have unfolded, where council members did provide direction to staff, and it resulted in litigation against the city, um, I've made it a practice to ask to direct our staff to report those interactions with us. Um, and they do a good job of that. And that just helps us. I mean, it looks out for that's the worst case scenario example or one of the worst case. Um, but it just, you know, if you and I have a conversation later, I'm kind of up to speed. I know what you're thinking about. I know where your your thoughts and your priorities are. Um, and, and I've talked to a lot of you about this. I don't think in your it's in your best interest to really engage um, beyond that director level. Um, when you get down into the organization, there's just folks that don't have that macro viewpoint. They, they know about their little four corners of their desk, but they don't know maybe how that reciprocates or affects right. other parts of the organization. And you might get some bad intel. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that may cause you to go a direction that, you know, you otherwise would not have gone. So that's that would be my advice on that. Um, I don't I mean, different city managers handle this differently. 
I don't want to muck up the works. We've tried to set up a lot of different avenues for council members to turn in their service requests and their uh, things like that. But yeah, when you're brainstorming policy uh, and things like that, I, I think it's healthy to get um, a director's input and opinion on that um, to, to help educate you on that. Um, but yeah, I think when you start to make the machine move, when you're saying, you know, go out and um, mow that or pick that up or whatever, that that starts to get into the administrative side and could put you in harm's way. So that's when it's best to work through one of those established procedures for your own protection. So I think I have a question. Um, go ahead. So I'm understanding the difference between the directing and the communicating piece just fine. Um, the the question I have is what about normal processes um, that are in place for a normal citizen versus, you know, us as council members? Uh, should there be a, is there a differential there? Should there be a differential there? I, I mean, I mean, um, you know, uh, uh, if I need to, um, so... Uh, perfect example. We're going to be moving our uh, house in the near future, so I I got to move our utilities from one place to another place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so there's a normal process in place um, for citizens to do that. Um, but do I need to take a different approach with that? Because uh, I, I don't want. I certainly wouldn't want anyone to feel obligated to do anything different for me than they would a normal citizen. Um, you know, but I, I just need to understand that. So I just want to be some clarification. In it. Yeah. Uh, in, in that example, um, and, and I think that would spill over into other similar or like examples. Um, I think using those traditional avenues, um, you know, staff is trained and directed to be highly responsive um, particularly to council requests. Um, so if you were to, you know, walk into this building and say, hey, I'm moving, can you get my utility account moved over? That is, that is a benefit that other citizens would not have. Um, and, and I would not advise doing that because you don't want to, again, put yourself in harm's way of being perceived as abusing the position or getting special benefits as a result thereof. Um, so in those kind of examples um, where you're trying to get something that affects you specifically, I, I would not advise doing that. But when you're trying to do your job as a council member to solve an issue, I mean, even if it's you're driving down the road and you see a house with tall grass and weeds, um, I want you to report that as quickly as possible so we can get on top of that. I want the organization to be re responsive in a very efficient and quick manner, not worrying about who made the request and how did it get made. I mean, let's just get the issue dealt with in that example. Does, does that help at all? But I don't think I was completely clear. So there, I don't think I completely understood your answer relative to, um, I mean, I, I do, I do, I would, so you're saying I would not want to walk in here and, and request that, but I could do it on a normal phone call. I mean, that would be okay. Or do you want me to take that kind of a thing through you as a city manager? I, I don't want any members of the council or, or even staff for that example to be perceived as benefiting um, as a result of their position more than the average citizen would. Right. So when you're looking for an outcome that exclusively benefits you, where in your example, I'm moving my utilities from this address to that address, if you were to just walk in the building and go to a, the department director's office and say that, that would be above and beyond what the normal citizen could do. And I would not advise of that when, even if it's as close as your next door neighbor, you say, this house has tall grass and weeds. This house has rubbish in the yard. Report that um, by any means available, whether it's 
calling the executive but I don't assistant mean that, or me. I, yeah, I didn't mean, you know, adding, you know, contacting the department director or something. But if I just called customer utilities oh. customer service. Yes. I mean, that would be an appropriate way to do that, correct? Oh, yeah, because that's the mechanism that anybody else would utilize that, absolutely. Right. Okay, so I just, so as long as it's a, a normal process for that normal citizen, then that's fine. Just, we don't want to obviously raise it to people, you know, and, and get any kind of perceived um, uh, special attention. Yes, sir. Okay, yep. all right. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that because... That's actually coming up. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> but you're not moving out of the city, right? I'm moving one block to the west. But I, still, I know that. I was still just in the city time. limits. So. Yeah, there you go. Just giving you a hard time, my friend. All right. Um, so I've heard a lot of discussion. Uh, I think we should follow the sexual harassment and hostile workplace uh, policies of the city. I think that'd be appropriate. Uh, I think there should be some kind of training on it. It doesn't have to be extensive, but, you know, uh, an hour, 90 minutes, something like that on, a, on an annual basis, sign off, as that's what other organizations do. Because it holds all of us accountable. And I think that's a very, very important key uh, in this environment of the world that we're in now. I think that's important. Um, and I would... I would ask for, you know, the body's concurrence on that, but I'm not trying to put you in a spot where, you know, okay, we're in a public meeting and now the mayor said this, so how can I say no? Uh, but we're not making a policy today. We're just saying how would we could do that and how would we go forward. So may, may I give you a food for thought? Sure. Um, I know Council Member Hobart mentioned the personnel policies and procedures, and I've, I've been ruminating on that over here. There, there are certain things that, because of the nature of your job, would, would not be applicable, like you know, how much accrued leave you earn every year, how you go about taking off time, um, things of that nature. Um, but there are other policies that will directly impact uh, you as council members and, and by virtue the city as well. Um, you know, the sexual harassment one has received some attention today, but another one that comes to mind um, is cybersecurity. All of us access technology in the course of our jobs and could make the city vulnerable. Perhaps um, to the spirit of council member Steinmeier's point of not being a full-fledged staff member, we could prepare a list of recommended policies and procedures that might be beneficial for this and future councils to at least acknowledge at the time of onboarding so that they are um, they are covered and the city is covered and everybody kind of at least has some layer of defense uh, right. around them. Yeah, I, I think that's everybody good on that recommendation by staff to say here's the things that we should follow based on that. I mean, I'm good with that if most people are. I'm getting nods in the head, so I'm going to take that as a consensus and, you know, direction staff to do that and say, hey, this is what we can do. Um, can I add something that he... Absolutely. Mr. Walker, I, and I have said, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're all concerned about sexual harassment, but our vulnerabilities in this city are huge. I mean, we're kind of that, that target to um for internet security uh you know violations are to being hacked we've we've already encountered that and and my concern i think is is bigger than the sexual harassment one even though that's an important one too is that we we're vulnerable in in uh, the way we communicate with the city and the city staff and um you know we're we're doing it off of here or our home computer. And I've argued that that's, that puts the city at risk because mm -hmm. we, we can be used as a backdoor into the city. And so when it comes to these types of policies, I think that, uh, you know, cybersecurity, okay. But I can take the, I can do the online course, but it doesn't make us safer. It costs us money. It, and, and you get the acknowledgement, so it's a feel-good measure for us that we've done it, but it doesn't actually make us safer. I mean, 
the mayor's had problems with email right out of the gate, with, with cell phone out of the gate. We've been hacked. Um, even though we spent $5 million on upgrades and everything, we got hacked shortly thereafter. I think we approved it in June or July last year. In November, we were already at risk. So all of these things are going to cost the city money, so we need to understand what it's going to cost to have us do these things, have them um, scaled to accommodate elected officials versus city employees. Um, so I'd like to know what the cost measure, because you've got stakeholders that are going to have to be in agreement with this, and, and then I want to know what the enforcement's going to be. I want, I want to process a procedure. If things are brought to our attention, who do we take them to? What do we do? Uh, and where's the accountability and the enforcement? I, I'd like all that, rather than it just be, yeah, you got to take a course and sign off on it. You, I've taken, I've taken multiple, um, and I'm sure John has too. He works for a, a sizable company. Uh, maybe Jared has. I'm sure Bryce has working for the county. We've had these courses, so. It's, and but like I said, I'm not opposed to it. I just, I want to know. Give me the purpose. Tell me why. Tell me what it's going to cost. Tell me what the procedure is going to be. Tell me what the enforcement mechanism is going to be. And then, then I can shake my head yes, because I did not shake my head yes. Okay, and and I agree. I, I was looking at the other members, but you know we didn't do a roll call vote on that. Um, but you know, with regards to sexual rest training, hostile workplace environment, and also cybersecurity training, uh, you know, I found the cybersecurity training helpful. And one of the things that I'm I would like us to see do in addition to what you're saying is I think we should all be required to use a city computer and not our personal computer. And I think we should all be required to use a city provided cell phone so they have access to it and not our personal cell phone where we're being provided, you know, given a stipend to do it. Um, I think that's that is an, 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 another example of putting the city at risk. Because I want, you know, I know, that's what I would, I would absolutely propose that right now that we agree collectively as a body that we will use a city computer when we're computer, when we're communicating via email with citizens or anyone else. And we would use a, a phone provided by the city and not being given a stipend to use our personal phone. Because when you use that personal phone and, and you're doing city things on that personal phone, you're putting yourself at risk. I think we're putting all of us ourselves at risk, and, and this is this is bigger than all of us. Well, so I, I asked that question um, when when I came on board uh, of the technology uh, folks. You know, ha have we had experiences in the past where um, you know we needed to uh, turn over computer, turn over phone to uh, due to sunshine requests or other ex requests? And the answer was no, that's never happened. Right. And so, you know, I mean, from a, from a convenience standpoint, I prefer to only use one phone. I prefer to use only one computer. Um, and, and so that, I mean, that's my preference. <clears throat> now, you can convince me you can, uh, the degree of risk. Maybe I'm taking too much risk there. I don't feel like I'm taking too much risk, given that we've not had any experience in the past that that has caused that that action as risk. But um, but uh, so I guess you know, you're going to have to convince me that I need to take that action over what I am so far, given given our history as a city. Um, so help, that's just my reaction. <clears throat> Can I clarify? Sure. Just want to make sure we're on the same page. So, personal devices, your personal cell phone, your personal laptop, are not subject to the Sunshine Law and cannot be, you know, taken by the city. Or, you know, if someone requests something and if it's only held on your personal device, there's nothing for us as city staff to do about that. I think. As opposed to if they are city devices, obviously those are subject to the Sunshine Law. 
one a distinction to that, and maybe this is where the risk is coming in to the extent it's there, is that there would be, to the extent you are conducting city business on a personal device, it could, they, they would still be subject to a, a subpoena if we received that, and it wouldn't be us receiving it. If that was, if that was issued, it was, it, it was issued to you as a, you know, resulting from whatever situation, and they said, you know, you, you know, you're known to conduct city business on this device because it's not separated. We can't just say everything we do is on, is on this laptop or is on the cell phone because it is on your personal device, then it would be subject, potentially subject to a subpoena where you would have to turn that over, not necessarily to the city because we wouldn't be issuing the subpoena, but to a third party or, you know, or someone who would, who would conduct that analysis to figure out what's on there related to the city. So I think that's where there's, a, and, and again, if that's, if the answer has been that hasn't happened, I, that, I don't know the answer to that. But I think to the extent there's any risk, it's there. It's not that, it's not that we're trying to get at anything on your personal devices, but if you can't say everything went through this email address, this phone, this computer, then there is the possibility that to the extent you're conducting city business on a personal device, that it could be subject to a subpoena, you know, on any given situation, and that would be outside of our hands, and that would, you know, require you to turn that device over. Does that make sense? Can I ask a point, of, a question on clarifying that? Because when we did a, a study session reviewing some of these topics, um, we were told that that while on the, the dais, that if we're texting or we're seen texting or, or on a computer and we're, we're, we're perceived as being in a business environment and we're conducting city business, that that could be subject to um, subpoena for open records requests, those kind of things. That's what we were told. It, it could be subject to a subpoena. But, you know, the open records requests have a specific process, as I think you all know, that, that has to be followed by statute, and those all flow through Becky. Becky has, you know, can, through, you know, department directors and staff, can say, hey, you know, we need this, this, and this, as it, you know, and if it's responsive, as it relates to, to things that the city controls, okay? But even if you are, to the extent you are conducting, I'm not saying it wouldn't be, it could be subject to a subpoena, definitely, but, but we as staff don't have any control over your personal cell phone or your personal laptop. So certainly you could say, hey, I, I know about this, you know, this request came in, and I know about it, and I'm I want to volunteer that this information. I'm going to forward you this, this, and this that I know is is responsive to that request, even though it's on my personal device. That's you know you could do that, but we have no responsibility to go at you know we have no authority to take your device or to look at your personal devices or anything like that. So to the extent we you know all we're looking at is what is controlled by the city. And even if you're getting a, you know, getting a cell phone stipend, that doesn't count. It has to be devices that the city, you know, the city owns, the city controls. So that's what we're looking at in terms of responding to records requests. But if there are, if people are like, well, hey, I know, I see them up there texting or whatever it is. Again, that's where you could potentially get into the subpoena situation where, you know, they, it, it goes to the next level beyond the records request and says, we know you're using that device for city business, and because of that, we're initiating this action and, and are subpoenaing your personal device as it relates because it we believe that it has city business on it. And that's beyond our control. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. So I agree with uh, Council Member Ferris about... Um, just for convenience, I I use my personal laptop to check my email when I'm, out, when I'm at my house. I use my personal phone to check my email when I'm out and about. Um, so yeah, for convenience, I like to do that. I don't want to carry around another device with me. Uh, but as an IT professional who's been doing this 20 plus years, I can tell you that me using my personal devices, I'm not any less safe than using something for the city. 
And I think Zach's IT staff will confirm that. As long as I'm, I go directly to the O365 website, I use the Office 365 app to check my email on my phone, and I'm not using an Outlook client, I don't think it's any left. My personal opinion is I don't think it's any left safe. Uh, but I would be interested in Mr. Walker's IT staff confirming that. So, And then you get into the fact that you're going to have to buy all of his devices, plus whatever device we're out. Are we all going to go buy a couple thousand dollar laptops for all of us? So that's my opinion. Thank you. So I'm getting a consensus. This is what I'm reading the room and getting consensus of, uh, you know, basically maintaining the policy as it currently stands with regards to cell phones and uh, laptops and personal laptops. Yeah. And I, I'll be honest with you. I disagree, but I will well, you know, tell me why though. I mean, I'd like to hear why you're disagreeing. Cause I just think I can tell you it's a lot easier for to help hold council members accountable. Uh, if there's a sunshine request, the IT staff can pull all our text messages, all your messaging apps, all those kind of things, just like that. As it stands now, they can. So it's a lot easier to keep communication siloed. Um, that's the that's the big reason. Yeah. And that's the, from my perspective, that's the major reason. As elected officials, I will tell you this from my perspective. I think you're putting yourself at risk from a, stand, a standpoint. If there were allegations of wrongdoing, and you hold your phone and you refer and you refuse to give it to uh, to the authorities when they're investigating it, for whatever reasons, without a subpoena, I'm talking about just an investigation, and that has happened in the past. Um, I, I think you're putting yourself at risk by saying, "No, I'm not going to give my personal cell phone over," because it almost looks like an admission of guilt at that point. Um, I, I, if somebody says to me that there's an allegation of something and they want to look at this, boom, here's the phone because it's the city's phone. I'm going to do the city business on that phone. I'm doing personal stuff on this phone. Is it a pain? Absolutely. Is it difficult to use the city's laptop and my own laptop? Yes, it's a pain. Is it difficult to carry both of them on with me? You bet. Uh, is it the safest thing for, for I think in my case, the city? and my self-elected official, yes. Can we respectfully disagree on that? Absolutely, but that's how I'm gonna conduct myself. And I'm not trying to make any allegations or any, any you know, I'm just saying I respectfully disagree with my colleagues, but I'm also, it, it's clear I'm being outvoted on this and that's, that's, that's fine too. I, I'm not saying no to you, I'm saying what's the cost and can we, you know, can we okay. make a decision based on cost and budgeting? I. I I and I misunderstood, I mean, and I apologize. I, I think we, again, it goes back to the the precious tax dollars we receive. Is it because I've said this? I've said this to Becky. I, I think the council should have a Surface Pro, and that we should be working from that. We get these tablets that are paperweights; they're worthless. And and we're sitting there trying to review. But I've all I also know that I sit next to two attorneys. One feels this way, the other one would give her her rump and give my stuff. <laughs> so, so I understand there's there's differing opinions. I just I'm not going to say no to it because we got stakeholders that have to figure out the cost. Zach's got enough issues with revenue and budgets. He's going to have to figure out a cost. What's it going to do to our budget? I'm not opposed to doing it either way because I don't have a computer that I work off of. I work off my phone and I do it the other way as well but I think I think we do have to have a sense of fiscal responsibility and figure out what what it's going to cost before we just say yeah we're going to do it this way or we don't okay uh would the rest of you be in agreement to you know kind of forward that proposal forward what would it cost for us to use to be provided a, a surface to provide a phone because in my opinion, it's going to be probably a trade-off between uh, what your stipend is and what the city's, you know, policy is. But you know, I'm op I appreciate your clarification on that, and I, I appreciate the clarification. And and I'll say I I also know that if you don't want to discuss with people city business, I know that people have used their personal devices to discuss city business when they're 
when they're not wanting to use that. I know that. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I think that's that's the point. I mean, if if you want to go outside that, then then there are ways to do that. I I don't know why. I mean, personally, I, I have a hard. I don't have a maybe a corrupt enough mind to figure out how to to why to know why I would even want to do that. But um, but you know, um, I, I'm 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 happy to explore it. Um, I'm just. You know, my preference, I mean, I, I run all my city stuff through the city email and uh, at least so far. Um, and, you know, and, and IT would have access to all of that information, you know, if they if there was a request and they wanted to, to pull it. I mean, right. that would be, um, you know, I don't get I mean, people can't text us on our city phone number. I don't. I don't think. I. I guess I don't know that. But, um, but uh, because that's a landline kind of thing, right? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking and asking. I, I don't I know, know the answer. I don't know the answer to that. So I'm assuming that that's a landline, and they can't text a landline. Um, but, um, uh, but, so, I, I, I've tried to try to ma maintain a, at least in setting my. Um, operations up i tried to maintain separation just from from a practical standpoint is is kind of what i've tried to do um but you know i i'm open to exploring it if there's a better way to do it i'm i'm happy to explore it so. to answer your question council member because there were some like frowny faces your like phone number that you have he has a landline phone number so no you wouldn't be able to receive text on that so he landlines and it forwards to his cell phone which is what he was referring to anybody else on this either way yes no no you want to know what it costs? I want to know what it costs. Can you do that, Mr. Walker? I want to summarize very quickly just to make sure I get this. So we will prepare as staff a list of the current adopted personnel policies and procedures and or administrative policies that we think would be beneficial for the council uh, to abide by, but also include any cost associated with enforcement of that. Um, I know, Councilmember Steinmeier, you mentioned enforcement in in some instances. Uh, for example, if you fail to acknowledge the cybersecurity policy, your email is is uh, discontinued until you acknowledge it. So we could provide enforcement things like that. The ones that get a little harder are things about workplace violence or sexual harassment or things of that nature, because in those circumstances, there's going to be some sort of disciplinary action taken um, against the, the person who is, if they are found to have made that violation. Um, in these cases, the, the council is probably going to want to have a conversation, and perhaps it's, a, it's part of this other ethics conversation you discussed this morning, but how you will enforce and police yourselves on some of those, because I mean, let's state the obvious. We as staff can't discipline you and tell you you're suspended for a week or something of that nature. Yeah, I just want a, a clear definition of the due process involved. And I think the other thing I might add to that relative to the cell phones and computers, what would be, you know, considered a best practice? I mean, you know, or or so I would I would like to hear your perspective as here's what would be a, considered a best practice, or maybe your answer is it doesn't matter. I, I don't know. I'm that's what I'd like to. I mean, if it's a best practice, then if there's a clear best practice, then I'd like to know that. I think it's a great question. So the things I hear from the council, I'd like to, for the sake of time, move on. Uh, what's the cost and the budget for the phones uh, with regards to the phones and the computer? And also, what are the best practices from other municipalities that are equal to our size going back to 
Councilmembers Perkins, you know, cities the size of Columbia, cities the size of the St. Springfield might be good at comparisons and good cities to, to look at. That'd be my thoughts. Are we good with that? And, and a clear definition of due process in that. And due process regards to the training that we're being okay. considering. Yeah, the, the sexual harassment right. or house workplace. Yeah. I don't know if somebody's actually calling my phone to see if I would actually ring it while we're on live stream. I'm not sure if that's what's happening there. But I'm, about, I'm about to take it away. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, I was just using it for a timer because that clock stopped. So that's what I was using it for. Fine with the timer. <laughs> but, you know, when it rang, what, what you're saying is probably turn the ringer down is what you're saying. It should be off. Pet peeve. Pet peeve. I can't stand when people don't have the courtesy to turn their phones off in a meeting. Point well taken, Councilmember. Thank you. All right. Um, would you like to recap real quickly your steps and processes on that one? You did that while you I, I think I did while you stepped away. Okay, um, perfect. Yep. And we're all in agreement then? Okay, perfect. Uh, the next one is process deadlines for city council agendas. So take a moment, quality by yourself, and write down some thoughts on that. Anybody, any thoughts or ideas on this one? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, I'm actually fine with the deadline Thursday at noon or whatever it is. Um, one thing I'd like to see changed is that maybe resolutions and non-ordinance action items get the same treatment as an ordinance would, that if you put it on that Thursday, you actually do a first reading at the meeting following that and then you vote on it on the second um unless it was i obviously read as an emergency which would require the super majority that's the only change i'd like to see done okay so you're basically in favor of keeping the uh not keeping it the same as far as the thursday before yes okay. so here's a question um to to council member um stewart's point there is a 
is a resolution by nature only have one reading? I mean, it doesn't typically have two readings unless we request that. I, I suppose that would be a change in the procedure, or I, I don't know the definition of that. So, in that question. I mean, typically a resolution would just have one reading. And resolutions are more for temporary type scenarios, ordinances, the reasons why we have the first and second reading are ordinances because of the charter. The resolutions are a little bit flexible, but I'm not familiar with any practices where a resolution would be read twice. So that that's helpful. I mean, I, I guess my, um, my comment really is that uh, for me, it would be helpful to have more time to um, to review, um, you know, the, I mean, we had, you know, as of Thursday, we had 500 and some odd pages to review um, before the meeting tonight. Normally, it would have, the meeting would have been last night. And so, um, you know, when, when on the, on the time we did the, uh, on the meeting where we, um, where we voted on North Point was over a thousand pages, you know, to review on that particular one. Um, that's just a lot of pages, depending on what else you might have going on in your life. And, and, um, and just to give it the due diligence, I think it deserves uh, to review that much material and, and then get, get, the, get educated. If there's something, depending on the topic uh, that might be before us, to get educated or get answers from city manager or his staff um, to, uh, so you can vote in an intelligent way, I think would be helpful. So I, I would be more in favor of an approach where we, um, where we had maybe an extra week. So maybe, um, maybe uh, that uh, agenda items would come either from uh, staff or committees uh, to the, uh, city clerk that on a, a not the Thursday before a council meeting but the Thursday before that um, then that would give time for the agenda to be put together and distributed on Friday and you had then a whole you know really have at that point you have 10 days to review ask questions get information um, and uh, and and then vote be, be more prepared to vote um, and I think it would be helpful to the public that they would have more time to know what's coming before the city council for those that are interested and, you know, be able to ask us questions. Well, have you thought about this or what, what's your perspective on that? Or I just think, you know, it's such a short time frame, and there's so much material sometimes that's involved to me. It would be, I would find it helpful to be a longer period of time. That's, that's my perspective. Any I'm, I'm a, I'm up for two weeks. That forces staff to really have their ducks in a row. And it allows time for amendments or changes to be suggested. It gives ample time for uh, us, the public, mm -hmm. to talk to directors, talk to Zach, make sure everybody has a chance to ask their questions, do research, look for alternatives. Um, and frankly, there's the thing is, there's no reason not to do, not to have it made sooner. There, there's literally no downside to it that I can see. Um, I've talked to Mr. Walker about that. I'd appreciate his input to make sure that his directors can deliver and he can deliver. Um, and it may be a little growing pains for a month or two, but the, everybody's just going to be more prepared. Uh, one of the things that people do complain about, uh, citizens, is last minute stuff, emergency meetings, that kind of thing. And that could get really frustrating, mm -hmm. uh, really frustrating. So it, in my opinion, staff also is more on top of their work generally. So, oh, we forgot to sign this contract for 1.6 million. So now in 24 hours, we have to have an emergency meeting and do that or our limit expires. Like that would all be gone because everybody would be 
looking at their deadlines ahead of time. Looking at their deadlines much further ahead of time. Um, I have a couple other things, but the the deadline thing is really important to me. I think it I think it would make us so much better from a policy and governance standpoint. We also have thoughts. Mayor. Go ahead. I see Mr. Walker's will to turn there. So how would that workflow change and would it be that drastic of a change and, and different one? And then two, given sometimes the nature of development and business and different things like that, could that hinder our development process as sometimes, I would say, fine prints being hammered out a little bit differently, slower, depending on the situation, could that hinder any development in the future? So I, I've heard in the first 60 days or so, the council talk about one, and, and those of you who've been here longer have been consistent in this too, wanting to be responsive to the citizens and community you serve be business friendly, you know, don't let bureaucratic processes stand in our way, um, be as efficient as possible. Um, you know, I'll tell you as an example for this meeting that's coming up tonight, um, it was Friday morning when we were still finalizing some of the details there. For example, there was a stay well committee meeting that impacted an agenda item that got added. So on the front end, probably off my toes here, the best thing I can think of would be, you know, for those non-consent agenda items and specifically, you know, those, those contracts that we, we have, but those other things that get added, resolutions that really form a policy direction more than what the city clerk mentioned, you know, not appointing somebody or recognizing a special holiday or something, but that have a policy impact to them giving those a two week review time period um, so that the, you know, the council may see them for the first time when the agenda comes out Thursday afternoon or Friday morning, but it's going to be two weeks and three days before you would actually be asked to provide a vote on that. Because if we were to look for at the calendar that we have in front of us, assuming I can find a calendar. Why can I have to use my other phone? Is that okay? Only for reference purposes. Only for reference purposes. We're not going to text anyone and uh, go from there. But uh, to go back for this, for say, for example, uh, the meeting would have been the 20th, would have been yesterday. Uh, everything the items that you're discussing and we'll need to define those and, and put those in place but it'd be on the would have to be ready to go at say noon on the 9th because today would be the 20th would have been yesterday the 16th would have been the normal approach to putting on the agenda and now you're saying now we're saying as a group if we agree to that i'm not i'm not discounting your comments but uh, as a group if we agree to that it would be the 9th would be those kinds of items we put on the agenda because this is the thing that I've seen from it is it makes it, it if, a, if a big policy item is put on the agenda on that Thursday ahead of time, people are spending the entire weekend trying to catch up to find out where it's at. And I, I see Councilmember Steinmanner shaking your head yes. So I'm taking that as agreement with that concept. You can take that. And <laughs> thank you very much. And, I know, and we, you and I talked in this phone, we already sure. agreed to it. So yeah. I knew where you're at. But I feel I'll be very, very honest with you. I agree with you, uh, Council Member. I, on those items that are important to us with regards to policy, we have to have that kind of uh, a constraint. If it is something that's a resolution or a proclamation or something of that nature that is not earth changing or does not change speed limits and things like that, I think, you know, I'm not opposed to those kinds of items being put on that, you know, uh, you know, on that Thursday before the meeting you know, to give you some time to work on it, if I'm hearing you correctly. I think it should all be done. On the 9th? Just, well, that's actually only like a week and some, right? Is that what we were, I wanted to go have a full two weeks for folks to be able to do all their work on it. Can, um, I, can I add that? Absolutely, sure. I, it, I'm just thinking about what Councilmember Stewart brought as a first and second reading less complicated for 
Becky, because we already have something in place. Number one, in terms of policy, you know, a couple of characteristics. The public interest has to be given the highest priority. That's why we do the things that we do. If we're taking the first reading and Becky reads it, that gives them the opportunity to hear it. And that's that gives them the opportunity to begin to look at it as well. Right. Um, and then there's clear accountability. We've given them a reading, we've given time for them to look at it, and then we come in second reading, boom, we discuss it, we vote. It gives us clearly enough time to, to research, it gives the public enough time to hear it. If they don't hear it, they're, it's because they weren't paying attention or whatever, but at least we gave them a higher level of accountability from our perspective, um, and and then the second one. So I, I think it's less complicated. It gives the two weeks. It gives us the public time to hear it and to research it. it gives us the time to research it as well, and then that accountability level goes way up. That it, so just thinking through it, I'm not saying we have to, but that makes sense, and it's not as complicated. So um, I think it's actually more complicated because you're reading everything twice. No, you're, you're, you're everything on the second. Well, I mean, we're we're doing it now. Are we saying we're, no. we're just not going to bring it up on the agenda? No, we're saying if the agenda is just done and complete two weeks early, then that just is what it is, and whatever's on there gets voted on, or if it's an ordinance, it's two readings or whatever. If you do it, uh, Council Member uh, Stewart's suggestion, suggestion, everything's getting read twice. And the problem with that is what? Well, it's not simpler than having the agenda done early. It's actually more complicated because everything's going to be on the agenda twice, plus all the new stuff. So the agendas are going to be twice as big. And you're reading things twice that you could have just done once. Yeah, but if, if you put the item on the agenda this week, it's going to be four weeks before they see it anyway, right? No, no it's going to be two weeks. Well, It'll be read once it, and then at the sorry, next if meeting. You do it during, if you put the resolution on during a study session, you're essentially, if you want a two-week process, you're basically giving it almost four weeks. So well, we wouldn't be putting stuff on at a study session. But but we're doing it not for us. We're doing it for the people we serve. So right. So which they is, get an opportunity to see it, hear it, and know that it's coming up. Correct, which you're coming up with a more complicated way to do it. We already have it in place. How is that complicated? Because it doesn't work because people don't have sufficient time. She has the resolution. She said on ordinances, we could treat it like an ordinance where we read it twice. So what's the difference? It's the difference is the entire agenda is done two weeks in advance, including resolutions, including all staff business, which means that every item on the agenda, every citizen would have a two full weeks to look at it. And then it only appears on the agenda once. That's it. So Our agendas are the same and every stuff isn't read twice that doesn't need to be. So for the example, and I'm, I'm using our calendar here with the holidays because we we're from June to, to May. So the stuff that we would be voting on today, the 21st, would have been placed on the agenda May 31st. That's the bad example because that's the fifth that's Monday of the month. That's one week too far. Okay. So that so I, would, I would be thinking, Councilman, if, if I can interrupt, and please forgive me for that, but I'd be thinking... And I hear a different discussion here between folks. I hear some people saying the seventh, or the, if you're using the day's example, would have been the seventh, and, and and we'd have a normal meeting. Let's say it was not a holiday, that the meeting would have been last night. Um, we either have the the ninth. You right now the agenda is changed from the sixteenth. Uh, we would change it the ninth, or some people are saying move it to the seventh, which would be a complete, basically almost two weeks. I'd be reluctant to have the sixth because I want that staff to have that one work day in there to work on something or trying to get something on there I, on the agenda. Actually, in my suggestion, it would have been on the 2nd. So you'd have that Thursday, we could move it to Friday on the 3rd. 
but then you'd have two full weeks and then the meeting. And that would be the first reading only, right? That would be the, it would just be our regular agenda. Just like we have now. Yeah. It'd just be exactly the same, except everything would have been submitted early. So that would be first readings. It would be all the resolutions, all the non ordinance action items, all the boards and commissions and proclamations. And then it would still be first readings, but your your first reading stuff would have to be done that far in advance. And then the next meeting uh, is, I mean, they're all regular meetings. You're just, you're pushing the agenda time back. That's it. So that everybody has a more better chance to work on it. That's it. So I'm going to write various people's recommendations here on the board. So what you're saying, Councilman, is put it on there. Uh, I probably would say the third. Which That's a Friday. Friday. This would be this Friday yep, out here. That'd be a third. Uh, Councilmember Fears said the ninth, which is cutting a week off of that. Right. Which is a Thursday. Right. Which would be if that's the third, the ninth would be. Is that correct? It's a week later on the Thursday. Six like days later. Visual. Right. Yeah. So the ninth would be right here. That's right. And that's Councilmember Spears. Uh, your recommendation is the third. Yeah. Okay. And Councilmember, let me understand where you you fit in this equation, Steimer, Councilmember Steimer. What? How were you saying it? So if it got brought up on the third, or let's say it gets brought up Thursday, so the next Monday's agenda, it will show the first reading. Yeah. If I remember, uh, mm -hmm. Councilmember Stewart, if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, you're basically saying keep it as it is right now, which is the 16th, but everything has a first reading and a second reading at that point, rather than a right, For example, you know, we have the Charter Committee resolution on there tonight, or I think it's a non-ordinance action item. We would do that as a first reading, and then we would vote on it the following week. Or the following meeting. Right. The following meeting. Right. Okay. So this is your recommendation here. We go, if I'm hearing you correctly. Uh, I'm going to jump in here and, and give my opinion on it. I really think, you know, I agree with, with Councilmember Fears of having this time frame to do it, and basically saying, you know, keep the rules the same, but just move it up a week for everything. Because what's ha what I've seen observed, and I could be wrong, but when it when it's done this right here, when it's done on this date, and it's it is a controversial item or a you know high interest item. It just creates a whole host of activity in that last four days that could be moved way, way up. But, but, but and, and I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, but remember, his from the 16th is going to get its first reading on the 20th. We're not doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. We're just reading it, and we're bringing it to the public's attention that this is going to be voted on in the next meeting. That's all. So that actually, you're getting more time. So I mean, in, my, no, so my concern is that there, people aren't going to look at the know. agendas that early, and they don't. A lot of people, if they follow the meetings, they don't even know about it until the first oh, vote. Yeah, that's right. I get what you're you're getting at. You're saying it needs to be made public. The yes. agenda needs to be made public. I I guess that's where we probably philosophically disagree. Um, you know, people uh, are able to get the agenda and read it ahead of time. Um, to me, that's fair, but it may not be, you know, in your worldview, and I understand that. So we may just disagree on that point. I think what we're doing, we're trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We just have different approaches. That's right. That's so I think philosophically we agree. It's, it's right. coming down to the devils in the details how you write the contract. Yeah. And, and we are agreeing. We're just saying... At least I'm agreeing with him that there's already a system in place where we already do that mm -hmm. with ordinances. So we're not really changing. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, 
if we are creating a newer system or a different system, then Becky has to make the adjustments. Staff, staff has to make that adjustment. I, I just think it's, and then, and there, and there will be times where it gives us more time than the, the two weeks. You're actually getting a couple more days, right? Which uh, I would think that would be what we're trying to accomplish anyway in the policy. So, I, I'm, I'm just trying to trying to keep the system that's already in place. Um, in place without creating something new, mm -hmm. uh, date, time, whatever. So, sure. Okay. So, can we should back you. What would be easier for you? <laughs> that that actually probably it creates more work for her. <laughs> I don't know if I want to answer this. No comment. She's a stakeholder. No, I mean. I, I'll be blatantly honest. I'm pro moving the, the deadline up. Anybody who's ever talked to my office will know that I'm pro moving the deadline up. So that's not a not a trade secret by any means. All right, let me ask you this question. If there was none of us in the room and just you and I talking and you may wave a magic wand of these choices, which one would you pick? I think the week ahead, so the ninth, it seems, I mean, I think that would be perfectly fine. And that would give you enough time to do it and then keep the process, the system the same, just one week up. Yes. Okay. Let's, and, and what I'm asking the group here to do is we can't change policy today. Is that correct? Correct. We have to go through a process then. So uh, what I'm, I'm asking, you know, you to basically give me the, the votes to say which one of these choices that you have, uh, you already know my opinion is I like uh, the ninth of that option to do it and then basically keeping the process the same. And then telling the staff to do that, we still have to write it up and we still have to vote for it and, uh, and, and put it through the process from the dais. Uh, but uh, that's, you know, I'm just trying to figure out which one we have four votes for and make that work. I, I think I, we're thinking a little bit, a whole lot actually. I understand the, the take on that we're trying to do here, but there are those measures where contracts, discussions, things, they go to the last wire and they just happen. And we also, I think we work in a professional manner that has that flexibility of, of if something needs more discussion, if there's enough uh, discussion in our community, in our districts, that extremely warrants a, um, can we, it would continuance for for two weeks i think this council has been gracious enough to move that forward and do that i'm just i'm in the future i just don't want to have situations that may jam up the agenda and or so if if we put these in place then what's the remedy if something doesn't fall within that deadline so what you're saying is if if, if staff comes to the city council and city manager and says Hey, we got a real problem. We got to do this ASAP. Uh, what would be the mechanism in place to do that? Part of that, or sometimes union contracts negotiations go a little bit longer, a little bit different, a little bit up to the wire kind of stuff. Well, they'll still go up to the wire. It'll just be a different wire. Well, that's the only thing. If it fell outside of that, then it becomes an emergency, correct? Yeah. When that, when that, and then, and then it would require, you know, two immediate readings. Just remember that you're just moving the wire. They'll know when the wire is. Everybody can know when it is, so they can still do it at the last minute. It'll just be, I guess, a question, little bit more in front of the meeting. Question I would have for, you, for the city manager: Do one of these, from your standpoint, you know, knowing that your staff's got to be, you know, that much farther farther back prepared to do these things? Do one of these make more sense from your standpoint? Um, or not, or I, I would advocate for making this, this item that was a little farther down on your list, study sessions and committee meetings. I would advocate for making better use of these off weeks between regular meetings. Um, I'll be honest, there's, I think you saw it last week, there's weeks where we're digging deep to find a topic <laughs> for a study session. I think you weren't you asking about what your your take on that that, that calendar. I don't like this. I I think you are going to get a ton of negative feedback from contractors, from people trying to do business with the city, who are 
I mean, these things don't evolve in, in the systemic way that, that we're talking about. Some of these things, the details of a contract are negotiated up to the point that we take a contract to council. So I, I, I mean, we've talked, I'm, I'm the chief frustrator of the city clerk because we're working on those items right up till the end. But um, that's, that's the problem for us though, you know that, right? Right, but that's where I would advocate for a better use of the second and fourth Monday or those second and fourth weeks, which oftentimes are community service announcements birthdays and anniversaries i'm being flippant but they're they're not good use of anybody's time i think we could utilize those better to dive into the issues that are of importance to the council that the frustrate if you're if you're for, from my recommendation the frustration that i've experienced is when items are added to the agenda that have not come through our office that we have not worked on that show up on an agenda and i see them thursday morning when the city clerk's reviewing the agenda with the department heads which is a terrible feeling because i'm you know as surprised as everybody else in the room and that's not a good place for the city manager to be in so if we if we could you know that mechanism of how things are added but then also how we maximize staff and elected officials time in those second and fourth weeks to more thoroughly review. I mean, not every item is going to be, you know, a deep dive and, you know, picking it apart, but other items do merit more attention, do merit more discussion, conversation. So whether it's changing what a study session means or it's employing some sort of committee framework to, you know, review these things in a little more detail. I don't, I don't know. What about the deadline? You don't like any, you want to keep it exactly where it is? Just I, I wouldn't want to go any further than a week out, but I, in, in, in looking out for your, as a body's interest, I think you're going to receive negative feedback from the vendors, the contractors, the people we do business with just by nature of those contract negotiations. And I don't want you know, we already struggle with a reputation of being bureaucratic or too slow or taking too long to get things done, which government to a degree is designed to do that. But I also think you want to have a healthy reputation as a good place to do business. Um, so I want to strike that balance. That's all. To, to jump along those lines, I think, I'll be frank, I think we're way overthinking this. I got you, sort of. I think we're spending way too much time on this. I think we have mechanisms in place that hammers that out to the constituents' concerns. Uh, some of the more major ones that come down the line, there's usually multiple weeks, if not months, that are in, in the work um, to, to get discussions, concerns, and thoughts out there for them. Well, I mean, I'll give you a, for instance, I got a call last night on one of the agenda items on for tonight that shed a lot of new information in my mind that, that I hadn't been exposed to. And so, you know, now I got 24 hours to address it with other council members and, and figure out whether I think what, what I think ought to be done um, to, to address the concerns I heard. Um, had that been, you know, had that agenda been out there for a week more than, you know, then it would have been out in the public's view. They would have seen it. Um, and I, I'm, I may have still got that call last night, but I could have got it in the middle of last week when I, when I had more time to deal with it. That, that's, you know, that's the example that I would, would lift up. So, um, Sorry, go ahead. I mean, I appreciate, you know, the perspective. Um, I, I just think that we've got mechanisms in place that if it is indeed an emergency, we can deal with it as an emergency. If it's not, then then let's have a little more time to work on it. That that would be my take on it. But um, I, I, I do agree with Councilmember Perkins in that I think there is – other pressing information to, to get to here. But one idea that I had while we're sitting here discussing um, to the point that I've, I've heard, perhaps if you do want to build in that 
earlier time frame, oftentimes what you've heard me saying is that we're negotiating or finalizing right up to that point. We know what's coming, so perhaps we could put out a tentative agenda that includes that information, but staff would still be able to negotiate and add addendums to the agenda uh, to those items that were specifically noted by the third or the ninth um, up to a certain I mean I think that would have to be very carefully managed so these aren't like well we're going to put the street overlay contract on for a dollar so that we get a placeholder and in two weeks it's 5.3 million dollars I mean I, I think you would want to be thoughtful about that but I think we could if, if that if the goal here is to give more time on the front end of knowing what's coming I, mean, I was looking at it through the angle of give more time to deliberate but if we want that front end then I think that addendum would probably be the the thing that would be most critical to staff just the ability to tweak the items that have already been foreshadowed as coming in two weeks or a week's time so if I'm hearing you correctly you correct me if I'm wrong Get the microphone here. Okay. Yeah. Is you're saying this would be okay for some items to at least put on the agenda, but then and those would be items that are basically contracts from the city, items like that. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I mean, again, as a as a real world example, the. Um, the various items associated with the Eastgate Commerce Project, most know that as North Point, the, the deputy city manager and, and staff were advocating for the public interest and, and through contract negotiations up till the time the contract or the agenda was finalized. If you used one of those arbitrary dates that's advanced from the typical process today, we could note, you know, a contract with North Point for blah, 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 but we could hammer out those details um, over the course of the next week to two weeks. So the council and the community would know those items are scheduled to be visited about on the 20th. The details may still be manipulated, adjusted, negotiated. I would, I'll jump on board with council members Stuart and Steinmeier at this point because <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Oh, it's recorded. <laughs> Take a picture. Uh, I get that it's easier to have more time to procrastinate and put things off, but literally all we're doing is moving the finish line. I, I would take exception to that. That's not procrastination. This is staff trying to make sure the city gets the best deal it can in any scenario. Sure, but but it's not fair to the citizens or the council members to have three days to look at a contract for Eastgate Commerce Center. That is not fair in any way. Mm -hmm. I, you had first reading and then the item was voted I know. two weeks later. I know. So you had two weeks. I'm just saying, I, we, we routinely approve million dollar contracts. There's, there's, in my mind, I don't understand why it's so hard to move the deadline. You know ahead of time what your deadline is. Why can't you just hit the deadline? I don't understand the law, but I'm sure there's things that you know that I don't. On my side of the fence, these are things that process-wise take time to finalize the details so we get a good product in front of the council's nose. Start earlier, finish earlier. We work for you, but you may get some crap product. Well, I, and I'm sorry, Dan, were you done? Okay, so good to have the discussion. We got, you know, we're not trying to burden city staff, but at the same time, we have a delicate balance, Zach, of serving you and serving this community. And one of the criticisms I hear a lot it, it's something that, that council member Hobart just raised is that we're passing or voting on million dollar multi I, I come in and I'm I am really nervous about it because I've heard so much about how, questions asked well how much do you know what you know how's it 
so you got to help us. I understand. You're trying to, to bring a quality product. We want... Um, we want efficiency and we want effectiveness and and we want to be diligent with that. But you got to kind of help us. But somewhere we got to figure out that middle ground. I do not like four days. I, I can just tell you, it doesn't serve. Uh, I'll just speak for myself. It doesn't serve me well. It doesn't serve the people that I represent well. We need more time. But how do we do that in a way that that doesn't? get you in the because you're talking about vendors those are customers but you have bill payers out here i mean these are people that are producing revenue for you to to employ customers so you you got to help us measure how we do this in a way that that facilitates we need some give and take that's that's bottom line so i want to be sensitive to your needs but at the at the end of the day these people out here, we got to be really sensitive to. So, how do we do that? Um, I I would three three quick thoughts. Okay. One is, um, I have things that I think are more important issues for the city. So let's just do the two weeks and see how it goes. A second thought I had is to Council Member Perkins' point of use the mechanisms already in place to continue an item, delay an item, remand an item back to staff. Don't, there is no rule that says you have to vote on it uh, just because it was on the agenda that night. Um, the third thought is make better, like I said, make better use of these second and fourth weeks, whether it's a committee hearing to review these or a council member asks for that item to be brought up at a study session. But I, I don't think study sessions are particularly helpful right now. Oh, I agree, 100%. Yeah. And I guess, and I think it's what you're saying is, let's make a decision on this, let's take a break, and let's come back and talk about those things. Is that, you know, do we have a committee structure or a study session structure is very important for us to talk about and say, what do we want to do? But is this a reasonable con is this a reasonable compromise? Moving it from the 16th to the, well, that's not the 12th, but it's, it'll be the 14th, and the deadline is 12 noon, and everything gets a first and a second reading. Yeah, the 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 cities where I have seen items thoroughly vetted and researched and studied, um, if, if um, that's kind of what I'm hearing is the goal to give more consideration and time to these things, I, I think a week to 10 days of an agenda coming out and then sending it to a study session or a council committee, if you want to employ that route, would would be a good balance. I guess I do want to say, you know, talk about do we set up a committee structure or a study session structure, and how do we use our study sessions to you know to move things forward that actually need our review and discussion long before it gets to the agenda. But you know, would you be willing to work with moving into the 14th, 12th noon, and and personally everything is first and second reading, and then we we talk about a structure of a study session and a structure of a of a. Committee process. So, so you're saying then resolutions would get a first and second reading? And that was what Which Councilor Stewart recommended. So so to use your your scenario here, um, it got on the agenda on the 14th. Right. First reading is on the 20th. Right. And then um, we would vote on it the set that it would like pass or July. would be July 4th, right? 5th, and obviously, you know, the 4th would be a holiday, but the 5th we'd vote on it. So, um, yeah. And would people feel comfortable with that amount of time? Well, that's more than what I was asking for. I mean, you know, from my standpoint. So, um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I am concerned about it, us adding, you know, right now we do resolutions. They don't have two readings. So, I am concerned about adding that effort to, you know, um, city clerk right. and, and the work that that would do. But uh, I'm, I mean, even even moving it two four, two days ahead like that, or maybe even to the Monday, you know, 
would give us a little more time to, to review it, to review it, um, right. and and, uh, and and have the the community weigh in a little bit. Um, I, I'm a little unsure. You know, again, I, I'm kind of like maybe Dan a little bit. If you move it to the the ninth, and then you you vote on the contract on the you know or a resolution or whatever on the twentieth, that I, I'm, I mean, we're just changing the the, the initial date that it's going to be available. That topic's going to be available. Um, Let me ask. Can I interrupt and just do a quick question, Becky? Can we do a Survey Monkey kind of thing to see what people's preferences are and have them write it down so we could look at it? Would that be a violation of Sunshine Law? I'll tell you now. I'll, I'm I'm with what we're doing now. Stay on the on the. Yeah, I think we're just way overtaking this way too much here for this. Okay. I mean, I, I I'll be honest with you. I would not want to stay on the 16th. I'd want to move it to the 14th at least. Two days up. Yeah, I'd be fine. So that you know, the and make it. Part. And I want to make it like noon, so you're not waiting going right up to five o'clock. But I also don't want to go to the first before the the Monday because I know what it's like to be a staff member and your bust and tail trying to get something done, to get on the agenda. The Tuesday. That would be fine. Yeah. I'd say if you're moving it to the 14th, have it be at the end of the day for staff. Because if they have to do a big presentation on Monday night, right, the director may need a little extra time to finish up on Tuesday. Right. Plus, you're getting us a couple extra days. So it, we're talking about Tuesday prior to the, the council meeting. Right. right. We're talking. Yeah. About, here's the yeah. council meeting right here. Right. Okay. Yeah, be good. And agreeable to them. Right. And go to the sure. So we're really moving it basically 48 hours up. But it allows people to have just a little bit more time to go from there. Wasn't it like that down before we changed it to there? Didn't we use yeah, it? Yeah, you could take it all the way up to Friday noon, I think it was. Friday noon. The prior four. What was it prior to? Before we moved it to Thursday or whatever it was? Yeah. I don't think there was a timeline for council members to add items. That Thursday at 9 o'clock is the specific deadline for council members to add items to the agenda. For that, I was thinking Friday was, was the Friday noon prior was the loose time. Well, because of the 24 hour notice, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that was like just by an operational law. Uh, so let's do this. I've got 231 on my phone here council member hallmark at 230 almost 232 so let's take let's take about a seven minute break come back and uh the next item will be city council and city manager expectations availability responsiveness one-on-one -on -one meetings all of that all right even with any battery thing? I, yeah. um, I know. So that won't help anything? I've done it before. I had to break okay. over. <laughs> <laughs> he changed it when he brought it Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you're actually, so, yeah, that, that clock is in dire need of uh, help and assistance. Decommissioning. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. In, in the end, yeah. the new battery. Yeah, yeah that's brand new. Yeah. Updated, yeah. Make it official. What's the saying? It, it seemed like there was a. Take the canola. Right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> right. I'm moving it up. Yeah, I don't get that. Yeah, I don't get that. Yeah, I don't get Resolution technically doesn't have any. Yeah, that's why it's on the consent I mean, these aren't actually. Look, I'm looking at the agenda for tonight. These won't be red. They're just there. Cool. Sure. But but even then, I mean, nobody actually. She doesn't read them out loud. So so the only thing that actually has official readings are ordinances, and by by charter. Your ordinances, except for certain types of ordinances, they have to have two readings and they have to be two weeks apart, I believe is what it says. Except for, there's certain, there, is it seven days? Yeah, there has okay. to be seven days between So seven days apart, over two two meetings, seven days apart, it would be, there's a few exceptions, like for, I think, budget items. Unless it's being registered. Okay, there you go. So, I think that the point I, and I know, I mean, I, and I see this from a few different angles. I think one thing to consider is that 
you know, it's not, <laughs> it's oftentimes, it's not us that are holding things right, up. It's, you know, we're waiting on other organizations, other entities, and sometimes, you know, those are, you know, we're waiting on them and then, and then pushing to get it on the agenda because there's some deadline that can't put us out. You know, if we wait until the next meeting, well, then, you know, we, we, we're outside of a, of a window or, or a requirement or something like that. So it's not, it's not, it's not necessarily just as easy as saying, okay, now here's the new deadline. And it's two weeks out. I understand, I understand just having that mindset. And, and for some things, that'll work out. But for other things, it's just, it's not always going to be practical to, to have things that far out and still get them on I, the agenda. I can tell you this. You didn't ask for my opinion. <laughs> if the council will be the ones getting the negative feedback about this. Because the way this will go down is we try to get something on the agenda. If we don't make that two-week deadline, we're going to say the city council established a deadline. You didn't make it. You're going to wait another two or three weeks to get a bridge repair done or whatever it may be. So the staff will initially take the hit, but I I do believe that you all will get quite a bit of negative feedback about this. That's that's just my opinion. So for what it's worth, I know we, no, nobody negative feedback anyway. Nobody <laughs> asked, nobody asked me, and I and I am fully aware that we're still. So I texted uh, this is Dan White, who's the he's the assistant city attorney in Lee Summit, and just to see, just because I was curious. And he says, agenda is supposed to be public. They meet on Tuesdays. And he said, agenda is supposed to be published the Wednesday or Thursday before the Tuesday meeting. So, and you all right now are generally the Thursday before a Monday meeting. So, arguably, they're, they're publishing theirs approximately a day Early a day or a day or two earlier. They have a ninety-six. Hour. Yeah. I talked to Lisa. Oh, okay. They're at ninety-six hours. Yeah. Their agenda. Yeah. No. Steal your shot. That's that. Yeah. Then that's what their council rules of procedure say. Mm -hmm. Got it. They're at ninety-six hours for agenda yeah. posting, yeah. and staff is required to yeah. school or to revise. Yeah. Yeah. What? What did you say? Uh, and that's the longest timeline. He's like, I, mean, oh, really? I can change the I, mean, I, I, never, I didn't and think yours was short. It's not a bunch of cities. Okay. I mean, 96, but a lot of them are really like 48 and 72. Yeah. So, I mean, 48 hours and 72 hours. That's too bad. That's why hey. we gave you a mic. That's right. Oh, I was going to tell you. Don't tell your grandma. Oh, I think they're good. I did not like that. Okay. Anybody want a pineapple coconut? You do candy? not. From first I think, experience. I think they're not. good. Okay. Go a on. pineapple what? Pineapple coconut. She got it from the historic Hawaiian Dole Plantation. It's like getting suntan lotion. I think they're good. It was not. Do good. you like Malibu? No. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, then, that doesn't count. I can't. Like, okay, I can't fix I that. Like suntan lotion belongs on your skin. I'm on your mouth. <laughs> When were you at the Dole Plantation? His no, grandma. my grandmother <laughs> gave me. Oh, I thought it. I thought it was your candy that you gave to him. No, no, no. I was here with her. No, his grandma gave it. to him. was in a council meeting one time, and uh, I think someone oh, behind me offered good, me this good. candy. Good. Good. In the city council meeting, I'm like, oh. I don't even know what they're Oh, it was a strange night. <laughs> I don't take it. Was it wrapped or unwrapped? Yeah, I don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> Mom didn't raise no fool. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It does. Part of it is like I do 
you know, you often on a unrelated uh, right. right. note. So, you know, I think the, oh, I know. the, 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 the two days, you know, you know it, 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 when you all decide, okay, it's okay. It's over. You I do think there are certainly you all should have awareness of you know prior to you shouldn't be expected to kind of be to get to get a thousand page or whatever it is and that be kind right, of the first time you know, you're seeing they expected to digest that. Oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, so I think that means a lot. I do. I do. I do. When you get there, like, we're going to learn stuff. I appreciate you. You bet. Thank you. Yeah, my dad had that issue. He had cold my dad had that you know, email that you sent me yeah. are you able to pull it up on yours so I can if I tell you no or are you still going to keep coming over you're going to come over here regardless <laughs> what are we doing with all this tape yeah. 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 I thought it was for the first place I was just I was just Oh, you're right. Like, I was expecting this to be like the GIS stuff. Oh, wait. Oh, you still have it. Yes. So, where are you wanting to go? Right here. Where I'm at? Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah. Where are you trying to look at? That's way for all. We just dropped your all the time. We went to get lunch yesterday. Ever able to get all these? <laughs> uh, same way. I heard that. You know what? You can have it. It works about. I mean, the same. I have the same vote. No, I am. I'm trying to scrape some money together in my budget. I I still think there are going to be situations where, you know, you will, should be, you know, it may not be in the final product, but, you know, where it would be beneficial to have some awareness and some, you know, some knowledge about, you know, the situation before you go. I'm sure I take it with you. It's traveling. All right, should we go ahead and get started here and do it to it? Um, Just a question. Where did we end up on that last? Um, your your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, but what I, what I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, we kind of compromised on going to the 12th uh, at noon, first and second readings for everything. If that, but correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I Go don't ahead. think it's first and second on I everything. I think it's. I mean, keeping the system the same, but moving up two days. That that would be, I think. Let's try. I'd be in way to in the spirit of compromise. I'd be willing to try that and see if that helps. You know. Um, I, I have, yeah, ahead, we have a clarification. So whenever you say everything's getting second readings, are we talking about consent agenda items as well? So we're not going to have a consent. Everything is just going to no, have two not, readings. Yeah, I say keep just consent because that's going to make it brutal. Well, uh, resolutions but, are part of the consent agenda, so I guess that's where I'm confused. Um, so we needed to find I was resolutions. talking about right. resolutions that, like, council members 
Oh, like the non-ordinance action item section? That's specifically what you're talking about? Yes. I wasn't talking about the consent agenda. Okay. But if y'all would like, we can just get rid of the consent agenda. I'd be good for that. Got an extra three hours on Monday. <laughs> In the spirit of compromise. <laughs> spirit of compromise. Okay. So from a staff side, I have a better understanding of what it is that Council Member Stewart is looking for because I think with those non-ordinance action items, they don't necessarily have to go on as resolution, so we could read them. We could read them twice. So I think that would be. Yeah, that that makes a difference well, when you when you when you kind of narrow it down to those because that's what she and I were confused about was how that would work with all, I mean, you know, resolutions generally don't even have, officially don't have readings. Right. I mean, obviously, even if you pull them out and, and have them considered separately, it's not read like an ordinance is. So we, we were just unsure how that was going to work. So if we're talking about specifically giving, you know, non-ordinance action items, I, uh, two readings is what I'm hearing, then I, that's different to me than what I was hearing before. Okay. Uh, and then, and also you've got it, you know, this is what I look at from this perspective. Now that you've kind of heard it, put your heads together, come back and say, from a best practice and a business standpoint, let's do this. Then we can look at it again and say, do we agree or not agree? I mean, that's, you know, that's, I mean, a lot of people have their ideas, you know, expressed and uh, it's recorded. So if you want to go back and see what people said, uh, we can do that. I might do that on you, Mr. Council Member Simon Stewart. <laughs> I'm teasing, just, just being honorary. All right, with that being said, uh, City Council and City Manager Expectations, Communications, Availability, Responsiveness, and one-on-one -on -one meetings. So that's a lot. And, uh, but anyway, you know, you know the, uh, the game. Uh, take a moment to quiet it by yourself and write down some ideas you have with regards to that. secret and everything just don't take it personal yeah. too late <laughs> <laughs> not too late for me all right anybody any thoughts on city council city manager expectation and communications availability responsiveness and one-on-one -on -one meetings so anybody any thoughts on that thoughts go ahead no I, I i don't really understand this particular um agenda item very well i I'm, i need to understand better what we're talking about or if there are concerns i mean I, i've found city manager to be very responsive very um i've you know met with him on a weekly basis pretty much since um i've come on board um so i, I find it to be helpful and be a good process and him to be very responsive and available as needed. Um, so I don't know what we're wanting to talk about here to be honest with you. Oh, great point. Same. Same. Anybody else have the thoughts? 
Okay. okay. I'm, I kind of have the same thoughts. Um, I, I don't meet with the city manager weekly, but when I do reach out, which is, you know, a little bit through the, every once in a while throughout the weeks, so um, he's very responsive, you know, so. Yeah. One of the reasons that I put this on the list was for, um, what are our expectations going to be when we do reach out? How quickly will he get back to us? Um, I want it to be a scenario where he doesn't, we, we want him to work on big projects. And we want him to be working on that and not being, um, for another lack of a term and no disrespect, but, you know, another assistant in the building that I should probably be reaching out to, you know, Kim or someone else to say, this is, this is the concern or this is the, this is the issue. You know, are there times when I think we should probably use other city staff to communicate our concerns to such as, you know, Kim, who is working for all of us under this, you know, the new setup would have been Sheila before, you know, we would have reached out to Sheila and said, how does this work? That's, that's my perspective on it. And that's my concern is, uh, I truly want him. This is how I look at it. Uh, I was doing some consulting with a CEO and she said, I'm telling my staff now, bring me CEO level problems. She goes, cause they're coming to me and they're saying, you know, should we refund this fee? And she goes, we've already spent more money talking about should we refund the fee than just refunding the fee. The question is, what should we be working on? What should we be doing? And so that's my perspective is I would like us to come up with an agreement on how do we communicate our needs for um, citizens' concerns in a way that they get addressed. But he works, this is what I, I see. He works for all of us collectively when we set policy. He does not work for us individually when we have an individual need. That's my framework for it. I could be wrong. I'm certainly open to discussion on it, but I wanted to get people's thoughts or ideas or, or frameworks on it. I mean, if he wants us to reach out to someone else other than him, I think we would need some type of guide on and that's scenarios. Why we're discussion. Exactly. And that's um, who he wants us to reach out to. Yeah. And I reach out to him on pretty much everything. Oh, I see a yard, exact, you know. But at the same time, we just discussed earlier, you know, who, who should I contact? And I can't really give them direction to do it. Right. So Zach works for the council. So right. I mean, but who, I, do, I, who do we reach out to? Right. And I, you know, uh, Kim, forgive me for 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 asking this but on situations like that that's what i've been doing with you is reach out to kim and say hey here was a, a barking dog complaint here was trash in the front yard for three weeks complaint on those kinds of things i go to kim because then she can say here was a complaint by a constituent because it would be almost the same as that constituent calling up and saying i have this complaint that's what i'm that's what i'm addressing or, or thinking of there but Give me your thoughts. Yes, that's accurate. And I'm happy to enter those into the city works and assign service requests with the department to address the issue. Okay. And for those who, you know, because you didn't have a microphone for those who said Kim basically agreed. So for the record, so thank you. Um, just thinking of those folks in cyberspace. Anyone else? That's how, you know, that's, that was the basic discussion on that. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on that? Uh, Mr. City Manager, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but any additional thoughts or am I reading the, am I reading the process right? And am I communicating effectively? Yeah. Um, we have set up a, what Kim was referencing, uh, the executive assistant to the mayor and council. We have set up a mechanism now that the city's fully migrated onto the city works uh, service order request system that we got uni unity across all departments how we handle service requests we've set up an email address a cm request at indepmo.org um, which stands for council member request uh, when those come in to us whether they come directly to kim they come to me they come to the assistant to the city manager sam morris 
uh, we send them to that email address, which creates a digital receipt, if you will. They get entered in the tracking system, and then we don't lose them. What we had before that was really challenging, um, with, with absolutely no malice intended, I'm certain, a council member would come in making conversation with, let's say, for example, the city clerk and say, oh, this 123 Sesame Street has the tallest grass I've ever seen. The city clerk wants to be responsive, so she turns in a request. Then he tells the council assistant the same story and the mayor's assistant and then the city manager. And all of a sudden, down at the frontline level, you've got a code enforcement officer ripping their hair out like, I heard you four times. I need to go look at 123 Sesame <laughs> Street, which, again, was an inefficiency. Um, I think we're better suited and stacked now that those are funneling all to one place. Mm -hmm. If somebody were to try to enter a duplicate, it's going to flag it and say, are you sure, you know, there's already a case on this. Are you sure you want to enter it? And that would usually create a nose of, oh, they're already working on this issue. So I, I, I think we've got good processes in place as far as how we manage that. Um, so I, I find myself spending less and less time on that stuff, which I think, as you said, Mayor, is a good use of, of my time. And, and this council has been really good about, you know, the, setting the expectation of, you know, just get it entered, but I don't expect you to, to work it or anything like that, which has freed up more time to do the higher level um, visionary strategic thinking that I think the expectation is that I would spend more time on. Right. And, and that's what. You know, I think we all want uh, a city manager and, and the senior city staff working on those big items rather than than that. And that's, you know, I just wanted to say that and bring it up, but I'm open for discussion and I'm open for clarification. Anybody else? Just one item um, follow up to that is once something's entered into city works and what would be a reasonable time frame to expect a reply? or a response or do we get a response or, um, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't want to, um, I don't want it to be a month and I haven't heard anything and, you know, or, or, you know, if, if it's, uh, should have been, you know, two weeks and I should have followed up again or something, I, I'm just trying to understand the best process there. I want everybody to know I didn't prompt council member fears to ask that, but this is awesome. Um, <laughs> One, the, an expectation that I have set with the directors that we are working towards is what I'm terming the, the back to basics program, which is when a service request comes in, how quickly and how well are city staff responding to it? Um, that's a light way of saying I'm, I'm moving the organization towards data driven outcomes so that the council can look at an issue and see it took 30 days to get this issue resolved. Is that acceptable? Yes or no? Does that, you know, is that within a goal that we've set? If not, was that a performance issue that needs to be managed or is that a resource issue where we need to allocate more to get a better response? With regard to city work, so we're, we're kind of in an evolutionary process on this right now. So we're at a point where we're perfecting, getting these cases entered, et cetera. When, when you enter a service request, um, within 48 hours, you should get some sort of an update on what's going on with the particular case you've turned in. Um, something that acknowledges, um, yes, we went out and looked at this and we've started a case on it and here's the case number. If you wanna you know, track this case, um, you know, we're closing this out of city works and now here's the tracking number if you wanna to look at that. Um, we want citizens to see government in action that, that they can tell they reported an issue that they can see where it's at in the pipeline of being addressed, and then they can know when it's been resolved and handled. Um, so long-winded answer, but yes, within one to two business days, um, we are setting an expectation that we at least acknowledge and address um, this initial uh, request that came in to us. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Uh, I can tell you that from my experience, Jared, if I get an email or a call from a um, constituent, I can forward it over to Sheila and Al Kim and just ask, 
please uh, initiate a case, get this started, and um, please communicate to the constituent or have city staff communicate to it. And they do it in, in a very quick measure of time because I get the email back or a phone call saying thank you so much for getting the city staff to, to contact us. And then they'll even give me an update and when it's closed. So I find it so streamlined. You just send it over and say, please open the case, please communicate. And if it's something that I, I think uh, Zach needs to be part of, I, I'll include him on the email. Sometimes probably he gets a little tired of that, but you know, he needs to know from time to time. In terms of one-on-ones, I know I've been criticizing the past four, but listen, I, my, my understanding and I, the very first meeting I had with Zach after I was elected, it said that, that my job and this council's job is to make you successful. Because if he's not successful, the city fails. And we can't have failure. It's not acceptable. So I don't demand one-on-one -on -one time from him. Zach knows that if he has a question or issue or he thinks I need to be informed, he'll call me. And, and, and if he wants to meet, I'll make time to go meet with him. But I don't demand that from him because he's the CEO of a $330 million corporation right now. I mean, he's running a company and he doesn't need me demanding time. That is pretty precious to him. But if he, if he needs my time, I will make that time for him to whatever he needs my input on. And sometimes he asks, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes it's just informative. But if I text him or call him, there's obvious delays and I get frustrated with that. But then I have to be reminded and generally it's Mrs. Steinmeier reminds me of this, <laughs> that he's a busy guy and that he, you know, he'll get back to us. And, it, and, he, and he does. Sometimes he'll forget about me, but I'll shoot him another text and say, hey, you know, I, I would like to talk with you about something. And he's always been responsive. So I hope that you understand that there's n not negligence in meeting with him. It's honoring of his time and wanting him to be successful. And, I, and I've and i made that very clear from day one with him. And I tell him that often, that he needs to be successful. We have to have him successful. So that's, that's my thing. My expectations are if he needs me, he calls. I try to stay out of his way. If I talk to city staff, I will let him know that. If I talk to a director, I will let him know that. Or rarely do I ever talk to a director. I ask permission to go talk to him because they're his people. And I'm accountable to him and he's accountable to us. So that's that's where I stand on. I just want to be very clear. That's kind of been my posture for two years. And that and I hope those expectations are understood and that communication is understood and the heart behind why I do what I do. So. All right, with that, I think we've got consensus. Um, the definition and purpose of the city council meeting. So let's go to that one there. You know in the drill, take a moment and uh, take a moment and uh, you can also go on Google to uh, to search if you like. We'll let you we'll let you cheat on this one. Okay. Anybody thoughts on this one? What'd you find from the, what'd you find from Google? Or we'll ask Becky to give us her, her definition. Oh, don't ask me. I didn't Google it yet. Hold on. <laughs> Anybody have any thoughts on it? I, I, I got a question. When we talk about purpose, I'd sure like somebody to define that. What do you mean? Well, purpose, um, we're not talking about 
definition and vision of a city. What what is our purpose? What do we understand? Did you did you write this? I'm sorry. Did you write write this agenda? Yeah. So what what your when you say definition and purpose, what it, how do you see the purpose of the city and the city council? Yeah. Or you mean the city council, uh, council city yeah. council meeting, What's right? The purpose of it? No, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I look at it this way, and this is my simple definition: it's a business meeting, meaning that when we go in there to do business, uh, it is an up or down vote. And what I mean by that is we've had enough time on the agenda to research it. We've had enough time to talk to staff to find out what our concerns are. And when we go in there, it's an up and down vote. And what I mean by that, it is perfectly and, and welcomed and invited and all of that for any of you to say, I'm voting in favor of this for this reason. I'm voting against this for this reason. Um, but anything outside that parameter, in my opinion, is not the purpose of a city council meeting. All of those things should have been done ahead of time. So I don't know, does that help clarify or does that make it cloudier? Um, if I could jump in. Sure. Go ahead, John. What are you thinking? Yeah, go ahead. I would agree with that a lot, but I'm also there to advocate for my district and for my constituents. Sure. Ad advocate for. So um, tonight I'm going to advocate for, for my district in, in the form that I do. And I hope that the council see fits in, in the direction that I, I put forth the advocacy. So yes and no. I mean, things should be already decided to a larger degree, but also there's a, a way of free flowing of conversation that can help with different thoughts and mm -hmm. advocacy for the district or in for the city. So, right. Um, it, it's just I just think that that we need to agree that it's a business meeting and we're there to do business. If we're going to advocate for our constituents. And you may need to, you know, how much time do you, are you going to take tonight to talk? I mean, on that issue. Yeah. You know, and basically you're saying I'm in favor of this for this reason. You know, absolutely. Those are completely and absolutely good uses of our time. Um, but you're not going to ask Zach about this and this and this. You're not going to ask Jeremy about where does this go from the legal perspective. I'm not hearing you doing that. Not necessarily. I'm not going to do that tonight, but I want to have that prerogative to do that as long as it stays, as long as I'm not badgering our city attorney, as long as I'm not badgering mm -hmm. uh, the city manager, but trying to get to uh, a consensus or at least a, a decision in, in my mind, or at least to help the council form a decision in their mind. And I think there's, there's a fine line there between having advocacy and then kind of badgering over and over again and not having a, a different result. I right. think there's that there. But yeah. I think at, at some form, um, that they have that leeway. It shouldn't be every every item every time, but it just should have that, that flow and that leeway there. Yeah, absolutely. As an elected official, council member, you have to advocate for your, for your district or they're going to recall you, okay? They're going to have their accountability to do that. What I'm saying here is if there's if there's an opportunity to do your homework ahead of time, please do that. If there's an opportunity to research a topic, please do that. If there's an opportunity to talk to Zach or staff or that or that uh, constituent, do that. Now, if you've done all of that and said, I want to tell you why I'm voting no on this, I've talked to the city manager, I've talked to the city attorney, I've talked to, with the permission of the city manager, the director of the department, I'm not happy with the outcome, the constituent's not happy with the outcome, is that appropriate to say? Absolutely. Would you agree with me on that? Yeah, I, I see where you're going. Yeah. But, you know, use our, be respect, be respectful to all of us as, as colleagues, you know, uh, to, to do the homework ahead of time and to go from that perspective. Agreed. Yeah, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. And that's just my perspective on it. You know, do you have a right to say you're in favor of something or opposed to something? Absolutely. Do you have uh, the right to say, I've done this and this and this, and I'm not happy with this, and I'm going to vote no today? Absolutely. You have an obligation. You have a responsibility to do that. And uh, if I didn't see people doing that, I would ask them, you know, why are you here? You know, because that you, you've got to show you're leaning in. But you've also got to be respectful to the colleagues that were here, to the audience that's watching, to the audience that's looking at us. Um, 
we've got to be respectful to, you know, there, it's being a public servant is a balancing act. And that's, and I think that's where your question is coming from. And, and would you agree with me? That's a balancing act. It's a balancing act of how much time do we spend, you know, researching ahead of time, how much time we do our homework and how much time do we spend in accounts meeting addressing an issue. Um, and that, I think there's that, there's that balancing act and that's how I see it. And that's where my definition is. So, okay. That, that's my thought, but I just want to get people's opinions and get people's perspectives on it. Any other thoughts or ideas or? I mean, Mayor, we've had this discussion privately and, mm -hmm. and I'll repeat what I you know told you publicly now. I mean, I want to have the opportunity in a set of council meeting, you know, to discuss what I need to discuss. And if that includes asking questions of the city manager or. Right. And the legal counsel, or whoever it is, I think that should be what I need to do. Um, so I guess I kind of agree with you, but somewhat disagree. I mean, I think I think I should be entitled to do that. I mean, normally, I mean, has there been discussions in city council meetings that went on way too long? Yeah, you know, and I personally try to keep mine to a minimum, um, but <clears throat> I don't object to, you know, and if another city council member has questions, they should be able to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. And um, not only for the benefit, for the benefit of the people they represent. So that's all I have. Right. But if I may, because, I mean, you and I disagree on this a little bit. We've disagreed when we talk privately. And that's okay. I mean, I welcome disagreement. You know that. Uh, I think I think organizations are healthy with disagreement. I mean, I think that's the, that's the essence of democracy is disagreement. But also, uh, there's that, that obligation to be respectful to all of your colleagues. And I will tell you, every time I've seen you, you've, you've always done that. You've always been brief to the point and concise. I, I, would you, would you, I think everybody agree with, with me on that. Councilmember Stewart's always precise to the point and there. And that's, that's my point. You make your point and you, you, serve yourself, you serve your folks well, and you need to, and you've got to do that. But I mean, where's that balance as a governing body where we, where we represent our folks but we're also respectful of the time of our colleagues uh, in that process. And that's where I'm trying to find that balance. Are we perfect on it? No, um, but that's, that's my point. And, you know, I will be honest with you. I think if, it, if, if an item goes on too long, I will ask people to call the question, you know, and I need to find out from you if it's okay for me to call the question. Uh, but I, I just think, We've, we've got to have, uh, I think this agreement is good. I think it's healthy. I hope, I hope all of you have had, felt like you've had the opportunity today to share your perspective on an item and to come to a sense of consensus. And I think we're looking at the agenda and where we are from there, you know, there was a lot of compromise in just getting that. And that's what I'm looking for in an organization. I think that's healthy. But also we've got to be, we've got to be cognizant of our colleagues and the time frame spent. And that's all I'm saying there. Maybe I'll say any points or comments. Uh, Madam, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Madam, Mr. Mayor. Please don't do that again. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Probably. Um, so a lot of times uh, in the practice of law, especially if you're going to the courtroom a lot, um, you'll have opposing counsel, you have the judge, you're going to put the judge on the spot and make the judge make a decision. So a lot of times you go into the chambers, you talk to the judge, your opposing counsel's there, and sometimes you'll get the a decision, you know, the judge will say, well, I'm inclined to do this or that, and you can say, well, judge, I appreciate that, but publicly, I have to advocate for my client, even though I know what you're going to do, but I can't just say, okay, and take the beating. You have to say what you're doing isn't right, please, show, you know, I object. Really what I would like to see, obviously people don't have to be like me or be a lawyer, but, um, you know, the questions we can ask ahead of time to our folks, really get an answer to your problem, figure out the problem, figure out as much as you can about the issue. That's why I wanted extra time on the agenda. You can... It, in my opinion, it's fair in a public meeting to make your points. Uh, it's fair to say, you know, 
Mr. Manager, I disagree with this spending or I disagree with, you know, that style of car or, you know, that building or whatever. Um, and you, you should always be free to make a point, ask a question. I would just like to see it get to a point where the questions that we could have asked ahead of time are asked ahead of time. That's sort of how I see any of this. I still want people to make their bones with their constituents, with their citizens. Uh, it is important to our citizens to know that we don't just roll over and do whatever the city says. That is important. Right. Um, and I've one of the things Council Member Steinmeier and I often disagree, as we used to say, more congenially to each other, but um, I believe that too. Without disagreement, there is no compromise. Right. Without compromise, there's no government. Right. So no matter where we land or fall or end up, uh, we, we definitely need to be able to do our jobs and do them the way we see fit. I do believe in that. Right. Um, I would like to just be a bit more efficient uh, on Monday nights. You know, that's all. That's and, that's my take right. on and this. And my three Ps, and you're going to hear me say it a bunch, is we're going to be polite, professional, and productive. And we might have differences of agreements on that. And uh, But I will tell you this. This is my obligation to everyone here and to the citizens. Uh, I remember having a discussion with a gentleman at the door. And he said, you know, you're, you're running. I said, I'm running for mayor. And he goes, that's fine. He goes, I watch every city council meeting. And I said, okay. And so I knew here it came, right? Because he had an opinion, an educated opinion. And he says, I'm only going to vote for you if you make the promise that you will make city council meetings effective and efficient. And he says, what's happening is not good. And that was his opinion. And I said, I will do everything in my power to make sure that we work together as a team and a body to arrive at a point that is respectful and to everyone. Can we disagree? Absolutely. Do I welcome it? I encourage it. I think if an organization does not have disagreement, it's not a healthy organization. I will, I will take that to my grave. And so I want people to disagree, but we can do it in a respectful way and, and, a, and, a, and a good way. Another point that I'd like to make, and, and not to, to point out to anybody here, but what's important for me, is... I hope you've seen today when people have a disagree with me, I didn't, I didn't get angry, I didn't get upset, because they're just disagreeing with my position. They're not saying I'm a bad person, okay? And it's so important for us and as elected officials to recognize that if someone, if one of our colleagues disagrees with us, they're disagreeing with our position. They're not saying that person's a good or a bad person by that disagreement. And that took me a while, to, I've been very, very honest with you, it took me a while to learn that idea uh, in Jeff City that when we had debates on the floors, that literally it would be like this. One bill would come up and one of my best friends and myself would be on the floor and we'd be at each other. And then the next bill would be all kumbaya because we agreed on this bill. And it wasn't because we were going with each other with that, or against each other because of, of our of our relationship is because of our philosophies and our ideals. And we were, we were discussing and fighting about ideals and ideas and not about personalities. And when we separate that and we make that distinction, then it's very easy not to take the emotional into it. And, and that's, you know, I, I hope, and all of us have been, I, I, this has gone much better than I anticipated and I'm delighted for that. I just think this has been a great discussion and I hope everyone has felt heard and felt you know, involved in the process. And if they haven't, call me up and hold me accountable to that. Because that's my goal here is that everyone feels heard, they feel part of the team, that we're collegial and we work for it in a positive way. So, um, and I can just tell from the body language, I'm bloviating too much, so I will stop. Uh, and I will say we've covered the study session purpose. Uh, now the, the question is on uh, study session committees, uh, I have some thoughts on that, but I wanna hear from the group. Wait a second. Go ahead. I just wanna go back. Sure. Because I'm the last one that got the call. To right. I understand. Okay. So I'm the one who got the, the smackdown. So I, I'm just going to say that the definition and purpose of a city council meeting, another word for purpose is design. This is what we're trying to talk about. You Thank and you. I have had conversations about it. You want a shortened session like that, you got to give us more time to look at things. Right. I've heard <laughs> the criticism before. Well, why didn't you reach out? 
Well, I'm not going to embarrass somebody from the diocese that I have reached out and got no response. Sure. And that's happened multiple times. And I've had, I've reached out and got an opinion and then got a differing opinion the night of. Well, how does that make people feel? Sure. In the design. So my thing is, if this is what we want, is more of a, a defined design of city right. council, then we have to we have to tweak the design. Okay. So far, we haven't really come to any conclusions how we're going to do that. Okay. So until we do, I think we still should have, as Councilmember Hobart, I appreciate his support in that, is that we can still have the dialogue and the questions. Mm -hmm. And and I, but I am not. You want professionalism? I don't call out people when they don't respond to me or if they give me a differing answer sure. the night of than. Right. So, um, I, I'm going to stay polite. I'm going to stay professional in that, but uh, that's why I asked. If so, if the purpose is in changing design, the one that's more uh, defined, what what you'd like to see happen, right? We're going to have to make some tweaks to the system. But until that time happens, I can't just go in and say, "Well, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I have nothing," and so that doesn't represent well as elected officials we still have that responsibility and i, I agree and, with you completely we have to advocate for it. and there's a lot of times where a constituent will reach out at the last minute or they show up and they and they talk to you or they ask a question that maybe you hadn't thought about so sure need to have the the freedom to do so until we change the design that's just but, my opinion no no i agree with you completely and let's do this if if you're open to this and i know you are because we've had a number of conversations you've always been very open and, and Let's do this. Let's you and I sit down and say, okay, how do we make this work? So we represent our districts. We represent the people that elect this for us. They feel heard. They feel part of the process. And we're also, um, you know, balancing our desires to work with our colleagues and, and make sure that, that their time is well spent. I think those, I think all of it, that's part of the balance of government. Yeah. I thought that's kind of what we were going to do today a little bit, but that, I agree, but I would love, I would want all their input because it's, they own their time. I own my time. Sure. Respect means we start the meetings on time. We handle the business appropriately. We, you know, we come in ready to go. And, yeah. and I'm, and they all agree with that. I think I'm not going to speak for everybody, but, I, but I think that, um, I think defining the, the design of the meeting we have to have a collective agreement. So what I'm saying is politely and professionally, I'm not going to agree to the new design until we come to some understanding and agreement of what um, the outcome that we all clearly understand. What no, I, I agree with you completely. And, and that's part of the scheduling that we were trying to absolutely. handle is designed to you. Right. So. And, and also, it's just coming to an understanding of, of working with each other and saying, okay, there's going to be times when you come to me and say, hey, this is a big issue for me. Mm -hmm. And can I get, you know, this amount of time on the dais? I'm cool with that. You know, so let's let's meet for lunch and let's do this because I like I like the fact that you're really leaning into this. This, this is important to you as you represent your colleagues, as you represent your constituents. And how do we work together as a collegial body is very important. So how do we balance those two is the question. And I'm happy to work with you and have those discussions and say, where do we go and how do we make that happen? Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm not trying to be difficult because no, I no, want to advocate for their right to do the same thing. Absolutely. So, and I, I not only think they have a right, um, I would I would do the same on the other side. If I didn't see any of the council members leaning in and doing their job, I would literally call them out and let's go to lunch and ask them the question, you know, why did you decide to be elected? Why did you want to be here? What do you want to accomplish? What legacy do you want to leave? And if this if this is not something that's really driving you or your passion's not there, then don't do this anymore. Don't take a slot from somebody who, in fact, wants to lean into it. So anyway, that's that's my thoughts on it. Thank you. And I know I appreciate your your feedback, and that's what I wanted. I wanted just like this discussion right here. This so this last three minutes. I think that's what that's what I wanted to design today was that kind of discussion. And as we understand the process of how we work together as a collegial body mm -hmm. and have those discussions, then then we we find a place where we can say, yep, I'm part of a team. I'm part of a body. We go from there.
So I appreciate you that. And before we leave here today, we'll get together and, and talk about that. Okay. So with that being said, I think this will be the last thing we talk about today because was I forget if it was the agenda was at twelve at three thirty or at four. four. Was it four? Okay. Um, but my goal is to try to get out of here a little bit early. So the last thing we'll work on is study session slash committee meetings. Um, take a moment and you know how should we use those? What should they be used for? How should they be used so that we can be more efficient, productive, but also ask those questions. So I think that's a good that's a good good point. Good question. All right, anybody, any thoughts on this one on uh, study sessions and committee meetings? I think with what the city manager was, was hitting on is was, was absolutely right. I, I think they need to be more, more productive, some substance. Then if, if you don't have anything of that nature or any council person doesn't have anything, I think it'd be just better not to have one, honestly. This, just give our folks some time off on, a, on an evening and circle back up. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that completely. I think we have, though, kind of addressed some things. There's a lot of things we could talk about from this meeting here sure. and, to, and to clarify, but uh, yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else have thoughts? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Um, so for me, you know, study sessions are more about, um, you know, you, an opportunity to have a, a more open dialogue and discussion while evaluating certain efforts or certain programs or certain um, um, things that we want to accomplish for the city. Um, and, and also, if there are significant, you know, agenda items coming up in the future to spend more you know, significant time discussing that. That That's, to me, what the study sessions are for. I'm in agreement that, you know, we don't need to meet just to meet. Um, I mean, that's yeah. that's a waste of everybody's time. Right. Um, but um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm in agreement we need to make, make better use of that time. 
as far as the committee side of things goes, to me, um, the committees ought to, and, and maybe we need to, you know, uh, delineate which committees we're talking about. And um, uh, but to me, committees are to address significant items for policy development, um, for improvement of policy, um, you know, in. And, and in some cases, you know, significant review of, of activity and things of that nature. Like, you know, we have to, we need to review the, um, some of the things that come before the audit and finance committee, for example. But, mm -hmm. um, so that, that's my, that's just my off the cuff thinking um, after uh, not even two months of, of involvement here, so. Right. Anybody else other thoughts? Mr. Mayor, a lot of other cities use study sessions or they call them work sessions, and they actually result in uh, council action items. Right. Uh, ours don't, and that's unfortunate. Uh, I think our study sessions first. I don't think we need two a month automatically. I think that's proven to be a waste of everybody's time. Uh, but I think the, that we, we should shoot for one or one work session. I think it should probably be redefined a bit, but I think council members and staff should be able to bring controversial or big items uh, to those sessions before they go on an agenda. Um, I think having earlier and more um, meaningful discussions would be beneficial uh, if if we get to the point where we sort of redefine council meetings uh, then redefining our study sessions will be helpful in this way in other words uh, not only sh will we hopefully have more time out of council meeting to work on items but that meeting could give us additional time in council meetings to work on items before we ever have to vote. That's all. Okay. Anybody else? Other thoughts? Mayor, yes. If I may, it, and if we are going to do um, a study session, maybe we can think out of the box, depending on what the need is. Thinking out of the box would be the, the most immediate thing come to my mind is our police station. Maybe take a tour of that to see the dilapidation of that building. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be in, in city right. hall chambers necessarily. As long as it's posted and everything is moved that way, we can meet on site someplace to, to take a look or walk through. Or not all the time, obviously. But let's put that option out there to be out of the box, out of city hall if need be. Right. Okay. Um, one thing, if there's anybody else. One thing I would like is to come to a conclusion on, it might be something we work on more, and it might be, you know, Council Member Steinmeier, you and I would work, work on this together, is we need a process for when council members bring up an ordinance or a resolution or something like that, that it's either vetted or it's reviewed, okay? I, I am really, really, really uncomfortable with, for example, let's say we go to this date right here, that I walk into Becky and say, I have an item I want to put on the agenda. And just because I said, it goes on the agenda, it goes on the agenda. I feel incredibly uncomfortable with that. I think it should be vetted through some kind of a process. I think there needs to be, you know, depending on what the item is, if this is relevant to the police department, has the police department looked at it? If this is relevant to the fire department, has the fire department looked at it? What is, is, it, what are the budget constraints? What are the budget concerns uh, with this item? How much will it impact the budget? Uh, so, so as council members, we have that information prior to the meeting being started. And I'll be honest with you, I would prefer to have a committee structure. Obviously, that's because I've worked with that in Jeff City, and I feel comfortable with that. If, but I've had a number of people say to me, eh, they're not really hum uh, comfortable with the committee structure, but then let's do that in a study session process. And, and I see it as this is my recommendation that if we're in a study session and somebody makes a proposal and says, you know, uh, city manager, can you look at work on this, that we'd have to have four votes in order to ask the city manager to work on that. 
that we just couldn't walk into the city manager and say, hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? You know, that's my that's my thought process on it. I, I'm not married to the idea of, of, uh, of uh, committees, but I am married to this idea. We have to have a process where items go from the city council onto the agenda, and there has to be some kind of vetting process or some kind of process that we work with those. And um, that's that's my uh, my thoughts on it. The question in regard to that, as of right now, what gives us the authority to just throw something on there? Is it the charter? I mean, can anybody? The, the council rules of procedure. So the council rules of procedure. Well, I, as we discussed uh, privately, and I'll say publicly now, I'm adamantly opposed to, you know, that I think if we want to put something on there, we should have the ability to do it. Um, but me, can I ask you this? I don't mean to interrupt, mm -hmm. but let's let's face say for example, um, I want to get rid of something, and I just put it on the agenda, and then we have to discuss it in the council meeting. My thought is that's a great place for us to have an item for a council meeting. I mean, excuse me, for a study session, where we have that open flow of discussion. What are the pros? What are the cons? Why should we do this? I'm not opposed to putting things like that on a study session. I am opposed to putting them on a council meeting, uh, a council meeting, because I have the definition I have in my head, and let's work on it and see if I can change that definition. But I see a council meeting as an item where we're doing business. We have a we we are at a point where this is ready for prime time. This this bill has been vetted, or this item has been vetted, or this process has been vetted. Um, and I'll give you an example. You cannot have lunch with a lobbyist in Jefferson City at noon, go on the House floor and introduce, and introduce it as legislation. Now, you can add an amendment, but in order to have legislation come through, you have to introduce it. It has to go through committees. It has to be go through fiscal review before it's going to the floor. So I want us to have some kind of a process that we would do. Now, I'm okay with the study session process because I get some, you know, we're talking with you uh, privately. I've heard that, you know, you don't want to have a committee process because you've only got so many hours in a day. But, you know, would you be willing to have a system where at a study session, you, you have a right, council member, to bring an item to the council? Yes. But I would say we would bring it to the study session prior to making it go to the city council meeting. I'm gonna have to think on that one, <laughs> and that's and that's perfectly good. I mean, we, we're not making policy today, but we're certainly introducing ideas and, and moving back and forth and having some discussion on that. But, but, uh, I, I my spine has really not stiffened today much, but it is right now, and not because of anything you said. We have to have a process. Okay, it it is it is unfair to our constituents, and it's unfair to our colleagues, it's unfair to everybody. We need a process. Can the process be that anyone brings something to the study session? I'm completely good with that. But that's where we would have the open flow of discussion. Is this a good idea? Very similar to the discussion we're having today. I would see that, you know, I would see that kind of open open dialogue. What's your thoughts there, uh, Council Member Stewart? Like I said, I'll think about that. I mean, I'm not a... 100% sold yet. Yeah. Well, I just, I just like the good. idea of being able to bring it up. I mean, you know, and if it's not a good idea, then it gets voted down, as it has many times. <laughs> right. But again, I think this gives us the opportunity to define city council meetings versus study sessions. Um, I, I mean, think we, we'd also have to be able to take a vote during the study session, which at this point we don't. So. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's that's uh, you you're you know you're reading my mind. So perfect. Anybody else? Other thoughts on that one? Uh, that takes us, if there's no other thoughts on that one, um, I would like us to, in our, you know, for the city manager and for the city clerk to work together to, you know, take these ideas that we've adjusted today. I know it's giving you a lot on your plate, but come back with some, you know, basically some basic proposals that we could look at because we've got to take them through the process, as 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 our city clerk has so eloquently said to me, said 
there is a process, and, and I appreciate you saying that, so thank you. Because uh, I would be honest with you, I just love to have our procedures, you know, and our, our, our policies that we're doing, conducting our own business then today, but we can't do that. Uh, but that gives us time to look at it, and Councilmember Stewart can look at his ideas and see what he thinks there. But uh, anyway, just uh, anybody else have thoughts or ideas on it? Yes. I have something a bit unrelated, but I know part of today's discussion, you guys were going to talk about the makeup of council committees. That's something that we kind of need to have some dialogue on because we have vacancies, we have positions that need to be filled on those committees. So if there's not going to be any discussion on it today, can we go ahead and move forward with filling some of those vacancies? I know, for example, like the Employee Advisory Committee, Councilmember Hobart's the, the sole person on that committee. So we just have to make some, some movement with nobody, those. Nobody wants me making those decisions. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see. I'm going to look at my. What uh, you say? Can I come in and into your office tomorrow and uh, we have a discussion about it in depth? And that way, we'll go through yeah, each one of them sure. and do that. Uh, let's do that. But I would. I want us to uh, also, and I think this is very important. Uh, you can text hang on, me. Hang on a second. Go ahead. Do you, Do you guys have any desire to be on there? Employee advisory committee. We uh, look at the our four council employees. <laughs> When we had management analysts, we sort of. I actually, I could, I wouldn't mind being on that. And then the other two committees that I was interested in were the judicial committee and the transportation committee. You can make a note of that. Cool. One more spot. Mike, John, what does it make? Whenever we want. It's not regular. All right, I'll do that. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else? Um, I would like you to uh, either shoot me a text or shoot me an email and uh, what went well today, what didn't go well. You're not going to offend me. This is our meeting and how we can improve it uh, to make it better works. Uh, <coughs> so you can certainly do that. Give me your thoughts. Uh, maybe we should have had more humor or maybe a couple of games uh, that maybe made it. I can certainly do that. Uh, some people are shaking their head no, so <laughs> we won't do that. But with that, uh, we've got still a couple of items that, uh, but we kind of talked about it, items, you know, on uh, for elected officials placement, internal affairs, but we'll cover that, I think, in the ethics and uh We'll get your proposal back on how we would handle the ethics, you know, a citizen's board for coming up with some ethics reviews for the city council. So with that being said, if there's no other business today, uh, we'll call it a day. So I just want to say thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks for everybody's help. And absolutely. Thank you. A lot of effort setting it up. And getting well, absolutely. And you know, Kim. Becky, Sam, thank all of you. Well, that day, so Our residents who came, thank sure. you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.